and we are live. Welcome back to a gaming conversation with friends. Shout outs to the people on Apple Podcasts because people love us on Apple Podcasts. We get the, where we get the highest amount of traction, downloads, and overall you know, content consumption on podcast platforms. If you're on Apple, please leave us a like, share, and subscribe, or any or any platform. But but podcast platforms, Apple seems to favour our podcast for some reason. Thank you for 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 listening on podcasts. This week we we, we return with removal sanity. How are you doing? Hello. Yes, doing very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yep, yeah, it's nice to be back. Nice to you know get back in and into it and see what the world has on offer in the land of, of video games and most whatnot. Definitely. Most definitely. And VJ, have you got yourself oh. a nice cup of tea ready? I might grab one while removable is talking because it always gives me about 10 minutes to uh, lounge. I try away. my best, <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you don't put a little bit of sake inside it, you know, slip it a little bit. But, um Overall, it's nice to be invited back onto your show. It's always a pleasure to have a chat with, uh, how can I put it, video game royalty. There you go. That'll do. Video game royalty. There you on the bar. Well, it's, friendly pest, it's, a, it's friendly pest here, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Come on in, well, come on in Stubsy Bubsy. I've what been, have you been um, playing? Well, more, more. What I've, been, what I've been watching since I last spoke, I watched Ghostbusters, more, Star more Wars, of the Gears anime. Uh, no, hang on. Studio I'm Ghibli. Terrible, I'm, yes, I'm terrible at saying the guy's name. Right, Saki son, Saki. How do you say it? How do you say it? I would, I'm terrible at saying these names. Who made Ponyo? The documentary VJ that you recommended me. Hey, oh, Miyazaki. Hey, oh, Miyazaki. There you go. Just say Miyazaki san. Miyazaki san. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible at that. Miyazaki san. There we go. Miyazaki san. Uh, I watched some more of it. Not, not much more, but I've watched Ponyo. And I'll tell you what, it's a bloody incredible film. Because obviously, I watched bits of it from within the documentary. But the full context was seen, you saw it in the film. <clears throat> so, mate, I'll be honest, it's and I didn't because obviously I've only just got to episode two, I didn't realize that Ponyo was actually hand drawn, and that is incredible. It's actually fully, I could obviously tell with the art style, but it's really good how they made me love. What did you think? What did you think? A man, what did, uh, how did you think it was created? I don't actually. Obviously, I've seen the documentary. You probably thought it was look, CGI with a blend of overlays. You know, they can. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realise it was actually hand. Each scene was each single clip, as in was it was. It, that, was, was gen- I think. <clears throat> I think if I'm correct in this feature, I think majority of anime still in Japan is still handcrafted. There is AI technical. Uh, tweaks and overlays they do they do sometimes use but i think if i'm correct um not ai i mean uh computer cgi but i think majority of still is gone down the hand-drawn route uh, isn't it i am correct in that PJ? i think i i, I majority uh, i'm not saying all i'm you know majority no, I, what, the way i would answer it is that for hayao miyazaki who's been in film since what the 30s the 40s the 50s so he employs the most traditional methods. Mm. And I think that some of the animation sequences that you see in video games in some anime, um, I, I don't watch enough anime, but what I would say is that they do tend to blend some um, traditional methods with some software-based methods, if that makes yes. sense. But uh, well, I, I would say, looking at was it? It was um, the life of a anime artist. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're, you're the friend that you normally send me to. Um, they, if you watch that, they they generally do do majority of them on you know okay okay it's like drawing boards but you know uh, uh, yeah computer tools but they do still use hand drawn 
techniques as far as I'm aware of. Yeah. It's just, as you rightly said, there is some, there is some creeping in now with the software uh, enhancement. Um, yeah, so, I, like, so, for example, um, I, w- I would say certain visual effects. Um, yes. But, yeah, everything. I mean, even video games are removable. Even movies still to this day, you either have storyboards, um, which obviously is what mm-hmm. the sound begins with, but traditionally um, you have a script and then storyboards are created because it's what though if you go straight from, say, creating a script into production, there's no way that the team can understand what's actually occurring, how to break those scenes. So story the shot, are, the screen, the, the the emotion that's probably also worked up in that shot as well, isn't it? It's all yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the all of the text, like this is the shot. Um, this is how the camera pans. These are the lines that are going to be spoken. I, I have seen some movie scripts, and it is like you know, pan shot towards character. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, how does that work? And it's not until you see the storyboard. It could be a. 45 degree angle swoop down behind the back of the character's head and then spins around into front of them and that will be just that is a pan so until you see the storyboard you don't see that transition yeah. that journey of which the yeah. director wishes to take it's a language in itself if, mm. if you guys i'm assuming so forgive me if i've got this wrong but you've both watched the matrix film yes yes, yes so, yeah. so that movie um warner brothers was um, hesitant to to green light, they love the script and so on and so forth. But some of the um, the descriptions within the movie, they were mm-hmm. concerned that the technology didn't exist um, in terms of uh, camera systems, etc., and so on and so forth. In terms of how these scenes were to be produced, so um, I don't know if you know, but there might be something on YouTube. I, I'm not sure. It might be in the DVD of the collector's edition or whatever. But basically. They had to hire a storyboard artist and basically storyboard out the complete movie. Uh, yes, I do remember. Yeah, you're right. It's actually, I think it's in the collector's edition. So it's, it goes, you actually see some of the storyboard uh, ideas as well. And it's a, and it's a way to communicate, uh, whether it's a video game, whether it's a short sequence, uh, whether it's an animated movie, or whether it's a full on scale Hollywood production. Storyboards um, are. Uh, part and part of uh, the process and and for me uh, f- even in video games um t- i know it may sound strange but probably because i've been brought up on comic books is probably the most exciting or one of the most exciting parts of uh, of pre-production yeah because it's a is a visual reference of what it is the story yeah exactly like. yeah you finally then, get to see it absolutely. you know uh i mean I've, I've i've been you know one of the i was very lucky to buy some of the original cells of akira um and whilst everyone was snatching these all the explosions up i managed i went solely for the characters themselves uh and you just some of those cells themselves the detail in those cells those clear cells it is amazing and how they flick backwards and forwards and they utilised it is just pure artistry, you know. Um, Sean, Sean Stubbs, I told you he was a secret millionaire. You never believed me, did you? Do you oh, know, no, this, exactly. I'm not at all, not at all. This was <laughs> back in the 80s and 90s, and it was, uh, what was it? It was the the, the shop itself was, um, it was basically our version of GameStop. It wasn't game back then. It was, it was the 80s version of, it was, I don't know. It may have been Blockbuster. Could have been Blockbuster. They basically had just rolled up cells in a bin for people to take. Don't know why. It must have been a promotion or something for you know the 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 major release of Akira on you know VHS at the time or something. And they were just sitting there, and people said, "Look, you can have them for a couple of quid." So I've, everyone had literally bought, uh, snatched all the explosion scenes. And I just saw all the the the, the, the actual human beings that were there, and I was like, grabbing them because I can guarantee you now these are probably be worth something later on. Even then, I knew Akira was going to be a popular anime because it was one of the it was the one of the first animes that broke through into the western uh, the western world. Captured everyone's imagination. Okay? It did, yeah. It absolutely captured everyone's ima- uh, uh, imagination. And but, but, but you got to forgive Stubbs though, because he was down, down, down the local having a pint. Yeah, true. Probably, probably, yeah. It was, it was the, yeah, it was, it was an amazing time back in the uh, early eighties. Yeah, 
let's just say it was. Um, Hang on, it's, early eighties. Yeah. Removable. How old are you? I'm not telling you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, this means you're older than me. Probably. No, you're not older let's, than me. It was. It was the early eighties. Was, was it the early nineties? I was born in eighteen, eighteen, uh, nineteen eighty-four. Eighteen eighty-one. Jesus Christ, no. stops! I mean, Jesus. Nineteen eighty-four. Yeah, some He's, older than you. You're bloody old. I never knew this. This is news to me. This Look, I'm not going to say well. You, just, I just, thought you were about the same age as me. Well, just let's just say. Don't look it. <coughs> um, yeah, it was maybe it was actually it was probably one early eighties, probably late eighties, maybe. Um, and it was it. It's hard to explain what it felt like seeing Western. So Eastern comics over in the Western market and how completely different they were in terms of culture, representation, understanding, his, you know, history. It blew my mind when reading some of the stories out there. And we would get a – I remember a fellow school person of mine, basically I saw him reading them a comic – from Japan, <clears throat> and the detail, and I, one thing I liked was also that the violence as well was just immensely compelling, and so that's what drew me into it. it was the comics that were slightly to release over here for the uh, Western audiences, and then obviously the films came out, and that was another cultural shock. And literally from that moment on, I you know I've been a fan of all Eastern culture in some in shape or form, you know. Uh, but it's hard to explain that to, to to people who who probably today's generation just this part and parcel of, of the culture we're in right now. Back then, that never existed, and so to see it firsthand yeah. really blew you away. It was just like, what is this? <laughs> you know, and that kind of tied in slightly with the video game market as well. You know, Nintendo. You know. All that was kind of slowly make its way across into the Western Western world, um, and I tell you what, I wish you know, it was a, it was a sight to behold. Like you said, you know, you saw you know uh, Sega um, arcade. The main the big the big Sega arcades that was in Japan. Yeah, unfortunately now gone. You know, its heyday was also there was one. I think it was one in in, in the UK as well, wasn't there? I don't know. Probably in London. Yeah, I, think the, the only, I think it was in London, yeah. Yeah, I think um, the the only place where you could possibly sit down and play Virtua Racing, play Daytona, play Power Drift, the sit-down version, play uh, Virtua Cop, you know, House of the Dead, uh, all of those games, uh, Jurassic Park, um, Afterburner, um, this goes on, was, um, I believe, was in the Trocadero in Piccadilly. That's Saturday. it. That was it. That was it. Yes, the Trocadero. Jesus. Because you'd walk up the steps, you went through that big circle of blue, big circle with blue lights in it. Up, up the escalators, yep. That's right, yeah. It was It was an amazing time, honestly. It's a shame. They don't do shops like that now. They don't go in where Venue. they wow you with it's an experience actually entering the shop yeah that's the thing you went through a little tunnel and then you'd go up this escalator and it would just like welcome to sega world and it was like it was, jesus it, it was almost um like you were entering, theatrical um, entering um a nightclub you know on mm. it, 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 i'm not joking it was like that and for us kids it was like jesus this is amazing you know, it was such a. It was, and it's a shame what we don't have that sort of level of. I would say, in, you know, enthusiasm in today's modern, no. yeah. uh, modern buildings. I mean, you can see that from how modernised people are now. It's, it's very much square, different light palettes and colours and stuff like that. There isn't really bright, extravagant. Uh, outrageous architecture these days. It's very reduced and minimalistic, I would classify it. Um, and it's a shame. The same thing for internally. Internally, you know, in, in interiors aren't as... I don't think aren't as uh, ex 
exploratory as they used to be. You know, every you know, you, you'd go into some places in London, and it was just like it's like entering a different world. Um, I don't think you get money in places like that anymore, unfortunately. I think Camden Market is probably the closest still. Some of the shops there are still amazing journeys uh, to go into, but I think even they're on their way out now. Listen, unfortunately, really, we really don't want to know about your sordid visits to Ann Summers. <laughs> <laughs> trust me if you go down to camden square there's stuff in there that'll make even the, the most uh, kinky of us blush Mr. 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 i yeah, think so i think so yeah expert, there was, was we should have had an expert on the show <laughs> i remember going to one shop and it was a blend of bondage and uh electronic attached sci-fi equipment so for instance People would have thongs that illuminated and lit up, and would high, you know, little graphic words would fly across them. You know, it was it was an experience. I tell you, walking into it, it was like, wow, this is sure a bit not, weird. Are you sure you're not describing um, Masuko's basement? Possibly. You know, you know what Masuko's like. But, um, um, I, I feel we're being a bit rude because we did ask Lord Stubbs a question. I would be amiss if uh, remiss of me if we didn't go back to let him, letting him answer. I feel yeah, really bad does he remember what it was? Sorry, Mr. Stubbs. Yeah, he was talking about uh, his um, his CG slash hand drawn experience of uh, mm. of Ponyo, which he actually thought was live action. Well, no, that's not at all, actually. <laughs> Welcome to Masuku and uh, Pinky of Legend. Thanks for popping in. But no, Ponyo is. Um, I've never watched. How would you take say? Your take your time. Take your time. It because obviously when you look at it, you think, "Oh, this is this a is kids' film." It's kids, yeah, but it's not. It's no. It's very impactful, and like the moment. Well, put it this way: I think it, it blends that, both that, worlds. It could be, it can be good yeah. for kids, but there is a a much more adult theme there, which only adults will probably understand. There is, but it, it's weird how a, like, anime um, like that, it, obviously there was a, there's parts in it where it builds up really good. It's like, brings a tear to your eye. It's like, how the hell did that do that? He's, he's, a, he's, he's a master. It mm. was amazing. Mm. I mean, the, the bit... Oh, Oh, you wait until you watch Hell's Moving Castle. Castle. I don't want to spoil, spoil it. <laughs> no, no, no. no. It's just, just um, it, I mean, if you haven't watched Miyazaki films and people are listening to this, then I've got no um, sympathy for you. Miyazaki, so just say whatever you want I to do, say. I do, I do, because you know what? I'm jealous. Mm. I'm jealous. If you yeah. haven't watched Miyazaki films, I'm jealous. Because I tell you what, even though I watch them on a regular basis, yeah. that very first time, is a unique experience. Okay. So I do have sympathy for you. I would wish to go back there and start watching it. <laughs> this, this, is why, this is why often I keep mentioning that I'm really looking forward to How Do You Live or as in, or, or, or AKA The Boy and the Heron. Mm. Where the, anyway, sorry, continue, Mr. Stubbs. Well, where obviously Ponyo turns into human as such. And you know where the waves start coming, and they start running and running. Mm -hmm. And then you notice the little, the little, um, little little boy's house is protected. He seems protected. The, the waves are leaving it alone. And when he comes running up, and absolutely cuddles him, but squeezes him, that bit was amazing. And and when I was watching a documentary, he seen the he seen the. Um, The, the drawing for it, yeah, nah, this ain't right. Right, and, yeah. he, and he did it himself. You've got mm -hmm. to really emphasize it. You've got to go, oh, you know, it's got to be a proper squeeze in us. But he said it is hard to, to visualize how to draw it, but he knew. But yeah, yeah, he's, he's, then, he's a and master. Then, and then he's also took inspiration from his mother, which I don't know if he knew. Do you know the old one of the old grannies called Toka? Mm hmm. That, that's inspiration of what his mother was like. Well, as, that, as VJ as said, a lot of his stories are based on family members and and people he's known throughout his life. He's used that as a as a basis. Um, but, yeah, but honestly, I mean, I've never that that is 
of that film there as an experience. I, 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 to be fair, I, I think I want to watch it again. It was that good. I, I would really say was. go for it, um, but I would also he. This is just one of I also many unique experiences that you've got to go through. Spirited away, and oh, spirited away. That, yes, when I watched that, I was like, "Don't eat that food!" I was screaming at the TV. <laughs> There's something wrong. Do not eat that food. I knew something was going to go wrong. I was like, "Oh no!" I was, it does. It engages you on a, on a very good and primal level. He does, yeah. I knew something yeah. was up because it does Honestly, it's, it's, this is what we're trying to explain to you is that each film almost brings its own fans with it because each film is almost a unique bio, uh, biodome of his thoughts of the story. It's, it, I haven't found anyone who's been able to consistently create brand new fans on back of every new film and uh, he has been able to do that you know it's, you may not like one of them but i guarantee you are like a hell of a lot of the other ones oh i, I intend mm-hmm. to watch more and it, one there will be always be one you'll be your favorite the one thing i didn't realize though i'm not got for I'm, I'm part way through the episode two of his documentary is he was he was basically he tried to, to, to pitch studios, uh, film directors, etc. And he was told, he listed off the films, and he was told that outdated, won't work, no one's going to want to watch this. And they all thought he was, and it was one director that gave him a chance. Up. Yeah, basically. One director gave him a chance, and it ballooned his career. And all the films mm. they said work and do well were absolute hits. But he's obviously he's, 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 he one, he's what you call a luminary VJ, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He yep. seems that way because he's never happy. With he's his very, own work. Uh, I think, and he's, it must be hard to be his son as well because he wasn't happy with his son making a film, was he? In the documentary, in the first episode, um, you see him, and it must be very hard to live up to someone like that and try and be in the same world as him when your dad's basically the god of, god of anime. Do you know what I mean? I think it was. Um, I don't think he he believes he's the god of anime, or he no, no, he I, believes it as a. But you know oh, what I'm no, saying? Yeah, no. I know what you're saying. He's he, yeah. art artists and content creators in general will all be always be their worst, their own worst critical enemy. Mm. No one will ever criticize your work as much as you will, because yeah. you've bled, you've pushed through it, you've gone through it, you've looked through it, you've tweaked it, you've gone backwards and forwards, you've. You've agonised over it on numerous occasions. You know, no one will be the harshest critic than probably what you will be, um, and he's even worse than that. I think. Remove. I don't know if you've if you've watched the documentary, um, but there's three things, and and Stubbs might be able to correct me if I'm wrong here. There's three things that affect um, Miyazaki's hand when he makes a movie. One is fear, which he speaks openly. Mm-hmm. Second yeah. is doubt. Mm-hmm. The third one is embarrassing himself. Yeah, yep. yeah he does. He, he, is, he, what, he, he was getting it? massaged on the floor. He was starting to doubt himself. He was getting a massage because he was getting so stressed and doubting himself that he, yeah. he, was, he was actually getting, he got someone in to give him a, give him a massage. So, getting... Yeah, no, you're absolutely spot on. But yeah. I, I just I just wanted to say this to you. As much as you think that he didn't want his son to make it, what, what he was doing, in my opinion, and this is why yeah. I had a lot of sympathy for his son, because when you, when you watch the rest of the documentaries and you see it from the son's perspective, yeah. Miyazaki bit, reflects yeah. his fears, his own fears, and reflects him them upon himself from the viewpoint of his son. And oh, that's okay. that's that's the issue. That's how I see it. You, you, you may see it differently from me. That's why I apologize because you need to watch the rest of them. Yeah. And if yeah. removable watches them as well. Maybe we'll come with it all, uh, from three different angles. But that was my takeaway: is that and and parents always want. And I, I'm not a parent. The parents always want. Oh yeah, they always want the best. They they, they want they, their they children want to their, do better than they what they are. Want, yeah, they don't want they don't want their their children to repeat the mistakes 
Mm -hmm. they've made throughout their life and they want them to be better but inadvertently you don't realize the damage that you do to your children by confining them to a specific way that you think you, is better yeah, for yeah, them yeah, yeah. because it didn't because it didn't you didn't it didn't work the way you tried it for yourself and that is the issue that Miyazaki has on his son but he wants his son to do really great and at the same time he says to the producer look if he can't make it I'm there to back him up so that's his exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry, but that's just my, you know, my. No, I think I think I agree. I think the, the biggest thing with with that is that, ironically, his fear for his son yeah. can't will be the hindrance because just like he needed time to go through and make mistakes, his son also needs to go through and make some mistakes. Of, he exactly went through a lot of pain and he doesn't want that pain to um, go. He doesn't want his son to go through that same. No. Pain. And that's the problem I think in, and this is the thing, and this is just being a good parent. It's just that hmm, mistakes inform you and guide you to a better place than no mistakes at all. That's and this is why he's been such a, he's why he's so good at what he does because of the life he's lived. It's like, but basically they say about comedians, comedians, uh, laugh and joke about the pain they've had through their lives. They use it to build upon the best jokes. Some of the best comedians are the most depressed. Look at Robin Williams, for instance. He, um, you know, they they suffer with the biggest traumas, the biggest doubts, the biggest problems and issues. And because of that, and because of the way they use that to create their content comes out the most realistic aspects it's it's the pain is the, is part of the creation um but as a parent you don't still don't want that to happen to your children so it's it's a catch-22 he he wants him to succeed but at the same time he probably you know it's it's realizing that the, the pain is what makes sometimes makes the content you deal do you know, the the, thing, it, it helps. Sorry, Ruba, I don't know yet, may not ever. You know, the funny thing here, right, is that, and um, Sean, Mr. Stubson might be able to um, speak on it because I haven't watched it for quite a while. Um, is that his son is actually, forgive me if I'm wrong, but he's an architect. He, he went to university, got an, uh, a degree in architecture, and became an architecture. And it was the producer that had been with Miyazaki's son for about 30, 40, or whatever for, since the beginning that wanted to create the uh, Ghibli Museum. So he contracted, he went to his uh, Miyazaki's son and said, listen, will you create, you know, help us design and build this, you know, the do the architectural planning for, the, for this building and the location seeking and all that. Stuff. So he did all of that. And it was actually the producer that said to him, can you come and make a short for us? We want you to try and make a short. And, um, and that's how he got into it. And then he went on to say to him, look, can you go on to make a, make a, could you think you can go on and uh, write script, storyboard and direct a movie? So it wasn't even as, as if his son was, uh, is guilty of um, saying, no, I want to be like my dad and make a movie. No, exactly. and that's the thing, drawn, but I think, he was drawn yeah. Against Miyazaki's, uh, against his father's will, basically, but it was the producer that actually uh, enabled him to go in and go. And well, I think, I think, I wouldn't say his kid, but I think what no, his father that, did, he, he sh no, 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 he shielded his son from that path because he's gone down that path and the pain that he went down that path. So, of course, knowing the pain of any industry is, you know, if, if, you've, if you're in an industry and it's taken you a hell of a lot of pain and, you know, and, uh, What's the thing of loss to get where you are? You don't want your youngsters probably going down the same path. You want them to probably go to a different, you know, a different path that's better for them. And so I suspect he probably went into the architectural business because uh, the architectural business still is drawing, still is the artistic aspect yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, but it is very different from anime and movies. But I suspect maybe his son's did was probably interested in that but his father pretty much was like yeah. i'll steer you away from this because of the experiences he's had and so as you rightly said when he was dragged well not dragged into it when he was given the opportunity to showcase of his skills his uh he probably then realized that he because when you think about it, he's probably watched his father do 
thousands and thousands of hours. He's probably had the best teacher without even realizing it. See what I glean, what 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 I got from what I've watched, whether I'm right or wrong, VJ. I got the impression that, and I think he mentioned it, um, that his dad really wasn't around when he was a kid because he was working. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he was an absent he, father. Yeah, and, and, he, and he, that's it's all. It's all emotional, obviously. And it's all and that's oh, part yeah. of the pain. Yeah, because yeah, um, he, he knows. You're spot on. You're spot on. I, yeah. I took away the same thing, and basically, you know, the, the, the I think Miyazaki does blame himself a little bit for that as well. It yeah. is, but it's um. Because it over because the creation of that movie overtakes his life. Once he gets into full production, it's six days a week and it's like eighteen hour days. And all he does is go from his private study to the office, back to his private study. And basically, he didn't he neglected his son and he admits that. But the thing is, is that the producer knows Miyazaki, knows his son since he grew up from a little boy. So they've been quite a quite a close knit family. And yeah. Yeah. He, you see videos of his young son drawing away so he had the ability all along right but it was just mm. by Miyazaki by himself but uh, because of his own fears and there's no, the, we're, we're not criticizing if anyone's listening we're not criticizing oh, or no, we're, not. we're judging yeah. we're just observing what occurred in terms of parenting and and Miyazaki's own fears but that's we all have those right it's not we're not we're not um singling him out does, does that make sense because yeah Judging someone and the life decisions that they make, whether it's success or failure, no one should do that, right? Uh, but it was just just an observation and what we can take away from that and change our own lives accordingly so we don't make the, mo- make the same mistakes, but inadvertently we probably all will when we continue. We'll, we will continue to do so for generations going forward. I, hope, I, hope I think, yeah, I think to be honest with you, with it, with it, uh, it took me a while, even with the children I've got now, to say, look, you, they need to face their own demons. They need to face their own yeah. failures. Yeah. And I've still got very young children. And even so, because it was like, it took me a while to realize the, the even with me in the industry I was in, you the pain you go through helps guide you to a better place in the end. You become stronger because of it. And this is a problem which I think, future generations are going to probably realize pretty quickly is that uh, struggle failure and pain are better teachers than awards um if you're forever being told you're great you'll never really grow into something amazing you know it, it truly takes some you know uh you need to fall before you can really climb higher, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. It no, does. I, I, it does. I, I, yeah. you're, you're right because I, I don't know if you remember this game, Snakes and Ladders. Mm-hmm. So you can climb ladders and you will slip, slip, slip down snakes. And that is the actually that's the that's the, that's the mantra of the game. No matter how many times you fall down the slide, keep going, and eventually you'll get to the end. Snakes and ladders. Yeah, I think anyone can understand that, right? <laughs> yeah, and it was. It's, that's why it's, it's actually a beloved game because it is one of the very first teachings of how to appreciate that yep. things don't always go the way you want it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It is like you think you're up, and then you're straight back down again. Now you can quit there, or you can continue and try and get past it. Good guide mean- for life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, sorry, Mr. Stubbs. Sorry, please continue about uh, Ponyo because it's just uh, has lots of poign- Ponyo has lots of poignant points that we can discuss. Yeah, I mean Ponyo, Ponyo, I mean, Ponyo. Um, obviously, probably the version I watch is obviously quite heavily dubbed in English. It is obviously I watched the Netflix version. It wasn't. The original version, I imagine, it looks like it's been well dubbed into English, obviously. Um, but as long as it wasn't French and you could understand it, then no. it's, we're all good. But, but it, yeah, I, I just really enjoyed it. It's and then obviously the end happened, and I thought it was just a really good. It Pop Ponyo is. Um, 
It deserves all the awards and critical critical acclaim it got. It did. It's um, yeah. I'm definitely going to watch it again. See if I can get the family to watch it all together. See, because my boy liked it, and he watched from the bit where it gets climactic, where he 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 breaches and gets out, and he he goes running, gets all his powers and the stuff, and his. I think it's cool when his mum turns up. She's. Was she like a sea? Is she like a sea god or something? She's a goddess, goddess, goddess of the sea. Her. Yes, I thought it was so cool because all, all the boats were stuck, and she she basically powered up the engines as she rolled past. <laughs> mm. so I thought there, is, there is, cool. there is, there um, is, yeah. It's yeah. same with every song, you know, every film he does. There is a a pertinent story and reasoning for everything he's put out. Yeah. And that's why I think we, me and PJ are just so intrigued at what is he going to be? What's this new story that's going to come out of it? Yeah, is he? He's not still making stuff, is he? He's eighty-two now, isn't he? No, no, he's um, he's just released a film. Um, oh, he's just released month, new. Last oh, month, okay. Yeah. With, so basically, uh, you're going to keep making him until he with no trailers, no marketing, just a poster, and it's only he won't need it. Yeah. Wow, this is true. No, he, yeah, yeah, he won't need it at all. I think to be um, fair though, to be sorry. fair though, what I've just said there, it w- will be he will keep making it until he dies because he actually he actually says in a documentary that if he, it's a bit morbid, but he actually says that I don't know the exact quote. He says something on the lines of if he can't entertain, there's no point in no point in living. It's something mm-hmm. like that. He says a lot, so he he enjoys entertaining people. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing for Tolkien. And he's happy. As long as he's you know, entertaining people, he's happy. Same thing, it was H.R. Uh, Tolkien. Tolkien was exactly the same thing. That's why he did the historical backgrounds of all the worlds he created. He had to keep going. It ha- it was became, not an obsession, became a lifestyle. Um, and the same thing with Miyazaki. It's, it's, it's who he is. It's part of the ESOTs now. And so... I don't think, he, as you rightly said, he won't stop now because it's part and parcel of who he is. I think the biggest worry I think I'll ever hear is, is that he'll he'll he's, pass he's, away he's, in the middle of someone and will never get finished. That that that, that, that won't be true. his last. He must be unless the source his son can probably help out a little bit, maybe. But it's um, yeah, it's it's part and parcel of who he is. His ethos, right. his creative juices, it'll never stop. If he's still using hand drawn, he must be struggling because it was mentioned in the documentary. Obviously, he's a lot at the time in the documentary. He was obviously a lot older, not as young as he used to be. And with the drawing skills, he's he actually mentioned he was losing power in his, in his hands, obviously, because he's getting older. So, does he still do hand drawn or does everyone else draw for him? Does he still do it in his 80s? Hand drawn style is his new film. And yeah, I think he does the storyboards, if I'm correct. He does all the storyboards. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they do, I think he has enough of what I would classify uh, a team around him that he trusts to get yeah. the style right. I think he has, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he does do still some uh, individual cells, but as far as I'm aware of, I think, uh, Vijay, you may have I think he has a team now that he, fully trust to get exactly yeah so um uh, t- two things one is Stubbs. i have to applaud you lord Stubbs uh, of rutland the fact that you've actually watched the documentary and you've retained so much information and, and i've only uh, watched one episode plus i know half but a it's, second. i don't know if, i don't know if removable or agree but the level of detail that you're recalling um i think it must have made a severe impression on you yeah mm-hmm. I, lo- I love it it's uh, yeah. quite 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 impressive and secondly, just to answer Removables' um, uh, question, yeah, so so he basically, you know that, you, look, the, one of the most impressive things about him is that before any script is um, is crafted or, or written, he creates all the storyboards for the movies. And then those story mo- mo- storyboards are extrapolated into into scenes uh, and so on and so forth. But obviously before they, they're not completely structured into complete scenes and coloured in and everything, Um they are just enlarged, right, and um, more frames in the sequence so that he can see how his animation is playing out. And then what he will do, um, and you've probably seen this, is where he takes a pencil and um, and he just edits certain lines. And like, you know, you were talking about um, Ponyo when she squeezes the boy 
and yes and the cell that you see or, or the frame that you see it's it's still all just you know pencil but a larger frame just showing two or three frames of how the sequence is going to go so you'll have a you'll have keyframes right the start and the end and maybe one in between before all the other frames are built in yeah. um and so the start and the end sequence of that shot so basically what he'll say he was saying look this does look so static so he'll draw over the original um, mm -hmm. Um, and then hand that back to um, the the um, the illustrator as uh, in terms of an edit, and then they'll go away and do it. And and where the difficulty lies is that when they can't capture all of the frames that he's seeing within his mind, and then they go back and forth, back and forth until they get it right. So one of the things that surprised me, just to, this is to your point, removable, is that the team that he trusts is that. Typically, from what I, I, I took away from the documentary, it's a fantastic documentary. If you get do, I know you're a busy man. But if you do get time to do watch it, uh, I don't know it's going to be up there much longer because it expires. It's up, it's uh, up until 2026. Yeah, it, but we'll it probably get games reviews till about 2039. But yeah. the point, the point <laughs> being, though, is that um, is that um, sorry, what was my train of thought? Um, so he'll edit the frames, give them back, and then they'll come back to him. And if he doesn't like it, he'll bin it. But the difficulty is, is that they can't always, what he does is after a movie is created, he'll disband the team completely. And so those people obviously, uh, join him for very little salary and then go off to other studios. So it takes them time to, it takes him time to then, you know, eight, up to 18 months to figure out what his next movie is going to be. Then I'll come up with a, with a, with an ideal image right that's the platform for the whole of the next movie right and i think ponyo they show you that image in ponyo right that he creates for the for the whole of the story just one that one image that depicts the whole movie you've seen it, haven't you mr stubbs mm. and, then, and then they reassemble yeah. reassemble the team but i think uh, just to put it into a, just a really uh, fundamentally um um common term he's just got the pull shall we say in terms of g gathering you know the top talent that want to have on their lifetime resume that they worked on a ghibli movie you know whether it's one which is probably the more the most that anyone can take because every time there's a new movie other than his co-producer or his exec producer everybody seems like a completely different bunch of people but, i uh, think it's uh, 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 you whereas when you're working for such a creator of, what, what that what that what, what that tends to tell you is that there's no shortage of an, uh, an abundance mm. of talent but is that Definitely. talent able to coincide sort of like co Get withstand his work of his vision. Miyazaki's, yeah, yeah. vision exactly because he's, he shows he de he depicts two personalities one is of uh, someone who cares deeply for nature still someone who who's who, who looks to the war and the tragedies in terms of how that evokes and how he expresses his pain his concern and his imagination in terms of his movies and then you've got the the director that says to you know his staff listen look if you can't get it right you bet might as well leave <laughs> on the next go so you know you've got those two really contrasting personalities um it's, it's quite fascinating when you're working working with someone of that caliber yeah it's 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 the best way is, is, is frustrating because you know you don't have many chances to work with someone of that caliber um and so if you don't you're not going to hang around much longer. And so, as, but also at the same time, those creative geniuses take a toll on people who don't understand them. Just generally, they take a toll on those who don't understand them. And so it's hard for a lot of people to, to retain staff because of the creative way he works around it. Um, but it is worth, but because of it, it is worth so much in terms of, your cv a lot of people are willing to go through that process that pain uh, of trying to you know get it right so they as you said will have it on their cv that they'll you know they've worked on a studio ghibli film um and it's not saying that he's difficult he probably is a very difficult but he's difficult because of a certain reason it's the way he's he does his films and it's you know is that's the way he's he's learned how to get the very best out of himself the trouble is that can be a little bit toxic for everybody else. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's the uh, catch 22 of working with a creative genius in some cases. The, 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 They're the, not, the, you know, Stanley the, Kubrick, I think was an absolute nightmare to work for, but think, loads of people wanted to work for him. Yeah. No, you, you, because 
even if you fail, we were talking about failure earlier, removable, the, the level of education that you would probably mm -hmm. attain, maybe not, maybe not at the time, but that will come to you, the experience that you gain from there, that will serve you well over the years to, that will follow, exactly. precede, uh, precede your, your, your own career will be incredibly of incredible value. That the, the issue there is, is that Miyazaki can already see the film flowing through his mind, right, in terms of how the sequence should run. Mm -hmm. right? But in terms of, and I think he had this issue with Wind Rises, right, he wanted the, the zero plane to fly in a specific way, um, because it wanted to depict a certain emotion, not that fact that it was a, um, a construct of war and, and, and all it was used for destruction. He wanted to perform and flow, fly in a certain way. He didn't want to draw it. He explained it, and the artists were, were hitting a brick wall because they couldn't take his words and descriptions. And they said openly, right, that in terms of like, how do we take that and give him what he wants when we're not quite grasping what it is in terms of how he wants it to flow, even without a storyboard for this specific sequence. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and that's why I often, often say to you, uh, well, on this show is that, you know, when I refer to him, I said that, that uh, the previous documentary, um, uh, The Kingdom of uh, Dreams and Madness, is, is so apt for, for people of, um, of that mercurial nature, shall we say. Indeed, indeed, In yeah, it is. That they end up creating, right? Yeah. You know, it's it's the it's uh, it's not easy, um, but as you said at the end of it, it's it's beneficial. It's it's everything has to be a sacrifice. Yeah, and and I I just wanted to say, you know, someone. I mean, I don't want to sort of bring the tone down or anything but someone mentioned um in our timeline that they didn't like the house moving cars they like the movie but they didn't like the, the part with you know the rapey soldier i, I can't remember what this, so i apologize if i didn't get quite right but one thing if you do watch documentaries and you listen to him and you watch his movies uh, the question you have to ask yourself is that do you think or do you believe that miyazaki-san produces a single storyboard or approves a single animation sequence uh, on a whim uh, or or there is always a reason for why that scene yeah, is there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. there is a reason. There is a it, it, it. Some of the thing that makes his film so good <clears throat> is it doesn't shy away from some of the more darker themes. Yeah, and it's not that he's glorifying it. No. He's showing you a mirror. And sometimes that mirror is uncomfortable, but there's a reason to it. It's got you to an emotional state, which he knows you will go down so that what comes after that will be that journey. He's putting you in an emotional journey. and He's very good at setting that emotional standard. Um, and people so have people have a preconceived idea that these children, these movies animated, they must be for children. The, the point I'm just trying to make so that you can, you can kind of get to where I am and then, you can take my point apart if you like. That's, that's not a problem. But I just want to make sure that he doesn't, I, for me, he doesn't create any sequence of animation, doesn't approve anything on a whim. He he painstakingly searches his soul for a better word um, and, you know, sort of make, ensures that the concept that he is about to, you know, purvey, he's sort of giving it a lot of thought and and he'll approve it uh, with, with all consideration before, you know, sanctioning or giving his consent or giving his blessing on a, on any specific scene. The the fundamental truth is is that movie, just you know, someone said you know, rapey soldiers, soldiers rape, but well, better still, humans rape, right? And Miyazaki lived through World War Two, right? And he still finds it hard to come to terms with Japan's involvement in the war, right? Alone that the fact that they took part in it. But let's not forget the Allied forces post the climax of the 1939-1945 war conflict occupied Japan and other nations. And there isn't a lack of evidence that points to the, to, to the human behavior that went on there to say mm -hmm. that they didn't commit lots and lots of you know, atrocities. Religion, yeah, religion. there was atrocities that were done. Yeah, I don't know how I'm trying to put it politically correct, but I can't. But so soldiers rape before all intents and purposes. Humans who wield power and authority over others, especially defenseless women, will abuse it, especially, yeah. especially with a show of force. I mean, other other blokes with them and, and with weapons in tow. You know, he 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 faces his own art hardest truth, as you've, you've just you've just said. You know, show, holding up a mirror, right, to show you the worst in humanity, right? And because at the end of the day, we take we are affronted by it because first of all, it's supposed to be a kids' movie with animations, apparently, right? <laughs> but, 
we're all, but we all live over here, based on again versus what he's lived through. Even we're older at our age, we've lived relatively protected, you know, have relatively protected daily lives, right? But that was all taken away from them, right? Um, and you know, I mean, I don't even know, but even the Oppenheimer movie, right, is is banned in Japan, right? I don't know if you're aware of that at all, but um, so. It's not just about entertainment for him, right? It's about getting key messages out there as well in terms of what he saw, his viewpoint, and um, and what I get offended by. And I didn't reply to to, to whatever that was in the time. I'm sure it was innocent. Um, even uh, no, I, I, I can understand the, the well, yeah, I can understand the reason why they made it. But the question, I think, what they misunderstood was that, as I stated, he's put it in there to get you to an emotional state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's put it in there because it's also factual and it has happened, and there is no shy of way of getting that point there. And yeah, when you tie it into the bigger context of that film, you understand why it's been placed in there because he wants you to see the very worst of humanity at its worst so that you can go through that journey and realize that actually you can forgive humanity and you can become, you can see the beauty of humanity as well. So he's thrown in what, you know, could be classified as one of the worst horrendous things that human beings do to each other so that you can then understand what the characters are going through. They're remissant of saving the, you know, uh, humanity and the journey they go through to, to actually, why they've done that and why they actually in the end up saying actually yeah. no through all of humanity's faults we should still keep humanity along and we still should go down that path and as you said it's 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 that complexity that sometimes isn't grabbed and i think it maybe it's not grabbed maybe the first time or second it takes a few times to watch it again and again do you fully realize the I reasoning behind it. it. My, my, I guess my point. I guess my point is there is no mistakes, right? Miyazaki makes no mistakes, but I get. I shouldn't get offended because it shouldn't really bother me. There's nothing to do with me, right? Because fundamentally, what I'm saying, he makes no mistakes, but I don't like the fact that people just take um, a, a very sort of a lazy intellectual approach to point out ridiculous and accusatory. Well, accusatory so, so I've got uh, over what he's doing, right? Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm making a fair comparison. Welcome, Carlo. Thanks for popping in, mate. Welcome, Sergeant the Sentinel. Um, so, obviously, it, it's covered real-world things that have happened. Now, people may laugh, but in the UK, we've got a show called... I, I've watched them with before. You may have heard of it. Removable. What, EastEnders? No, called The Midwife. And yes. In it, and in it, they are factually and historically correct. And they will cover... What they've happened. done some little slight dramatizations, but yes, some yes, of the, the, the more the, heinous the writer, acts. The writer that, has yep. got stick just for covering it when she said, I will cover yes. said topics. So there was like, racism, there was sexism, sorts, there was it all happened, it all quite some nasty elements. Yeah. And the reason is is that it's there to shy, show humanity in its truest form. Exactly. Warts and all. And the thing I with think, that yeah. film was that it, it was showing humanity warts and all, but it was also, at least the way I kind of realised and understood it, was that <clears throat> the ending of it, and I don't want to speak too much about it because I want, want Stubbs to go through it and see what he is feeling. The ending of it, quite, it's the journey of the main character and the hatred he's seen and the stuff that he sees as well, because he does see that. It's like, why should I save humanity? And it's that root. Yeah, there is always something there. I think I I would like to say I'm a bit more forgiving of people in terms of when they make those comments. It's just maybe because they haven't understood it. And some, and I'll be honest, sometimes it does take a few viewings for you to fully understand the context of what's in there. There are still films I see today or I watch back today that I've watched, I don't know, probably 30 bloody times. And then all of a sudden, something clicks, and I'm like, ah, so that's what they're trying to talk mean. It is. Some films are... They live. They, they, they live for that very nature. You know, um, Apocalypse Now. 
perfect example. And this is not a joke. Of, it's removable. This is not a joke. So it's not. There's no. There's no joke in what I'm about to say. So don't take it in a humorous fashion. Groundhog Day. There is a reason for it. If you watch that movie really carefully, you'll learn. Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're going from. Yeah, I can see where you're going from there. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, remember just one more thing, right? See, I've been. You know, because obviously when we talk on these podcasts, I, I do take away stuff and I do consider certain things, right? So it, I, I don't think, you know, when we label things good and bad, I, I don't think it's, I, I think it's like what you said, it's not good and bad. It's just the nature of what is the truth. And if you look, if you can start looking at the truth, you start seeing the truth of, of yourself, right? And the being and the beings that we are and what we're capable of. That's all it is. I don't want to label it good and bad. It's just, it just is the transparency of it, right? If you're willing to look. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think it's, uh, but the, you know, everyone's at different levels when it comes to viewing films and, and, and understanding context and stuff like that. So I, I give little people a little bit of leeway when they say things that maybe you, you don't understand or you don't appreciate, uh, you don't feel they're appreciating the film for its full context. It's Mostly like it's because it's, it's, it's judging it with the, with the lazy intellect. But, um, yeah, but I, I think. I wouldn't say it's a lazy intellect. Maybe it's a naive intellect. A brain bypass. It's because perhaps? it's because um, uh, <laughs> it's because uh, as I said, joke. some. I know, I know. That's why it's giggled. <laughs> it was. I think sometimes it takes a couple of times or a couple of goes to see the film to fully understand the context of things, and not everyone's at the same level as say you or me or Stubbs or Masuku or or, you know, or, or different people. Everyone has a different level before we can fully captivate and fully understand the context of everything yeah. in some of these films. And so that person may have only seen it once, but they need to see it again. And maybe that's the best way of saying it. It's like, well, just view again in the context, try and understand what he's trying to tell you. Because I think you'll, I think you'll see it differently. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's there. And, and that's, that's you know, wanna, I just want to applaud Stubbs because, um, uh, the, he just seems to have just since he's been watching those movies and the documentary. I, I don't know what you think, Ruby, but I think he's his grey matter has improved a little bit. He's grown. He's, 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 he's trying to sell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's tall enough. But I mean, he's grown significantly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't remember who said it. Um, I think I mean Carl Jung, right? I, I know he's a, a bit of a misanthropist, anti-human misanthropist, but. That's probably myself. That probably describes me, really. But, but it's, I can't remember what he said. He said, he, he who looks outside dreams, he, he who looks inside awakens. So, some, something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I, I, can, yeah, yeah, I think you think you're right there. It's um, paraphrasing. It's paraphrased, but I think, yeah, the, the essence is correct, I think. Um, I just quickly spotted uh, actually uh, someone in the chat saying, um, who was it? It was GQ TV. Uh, does removal sanity feel AI can save humanity? Do you know how long that's going to take to discuss? Do you, do you know? Two Carl? seconds. Two seconds. Because I think it all depends <laughs> on. Um, it all depends on the laws they place on AI. And if you know as Moff's laws, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you allow an unfiltered AI, then it could be pretty not beneficial for humanity. If you filtered an AI with certain fundamental laws, uh, those who know Asmos laws, then I suspect it could be beneficial for humanity. Um, it's the same thing with any new technology you have to kind of believe i know ai is very different but you have to believe when people first saw the steam engine they didn't trust it they didn't think they, they literally thought it was a death trap they literally thought it was out to kill humanity well they obviously hadn't been on the zebra ferry yeah exactly but do you know what i'm saying so i think i think for me i i just i'm here with cautious optimism and that is in the bid that certain laws are implemented in the AI consciousness. 
if those laws can be implemented in, I think we could be moving forward quite rapidly into a new generation uh, of human technological interface. Um, if those laws aren't carefully positioned or if we rush too quickly, you can. You, we've got enough movies to see the end result. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. You know, the thing is, um, the thing is removable. The problem will always be is that it doesn't matter if it's AI or something else. All the, all power breeds devils and dragons in people's hearts, and those are the ultimate. Those are the people that are ultimately in control, and um, and whoever's ultimately in charge or controlling it is going to dictate exactly what AI and any of this other technology is going to end up doing to people, you know, whether you end up having a chip in your head and so on and so forth. But I don't know if I've got the wrong end of the stick of what he was saying or whether he was just being sarcastic or with, or if I've understood your question. The, the thing with human beings that we've got wildly fluctuating emotions, right, depending on what we're discussing and and AI will never be able to feed that that devil inside people, which is, you know, one the desire for wealth and fame and amongst other, you know, everything else that's out of reach, right? Of the of the common man, right? And and the problem and the problem that you're gonna have is that with 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 the with the power that's on display and, and people are ascertaining that well, if I've had this power, I'll have pleasure, I'll have fame and I'll have fulfillment that's supposed to ensue, right? Yet you can see um that most people are devoid are uh, of of what it is to discover go back to basics and discover the brilliance of say something like a simple life and until we start educating people or people or kids are educated like this from from school a, a level of school or elementary or even at home we're just on this path right which no one knows where it's going to lead so it's really difficult to to answer right whether this or that or the other is going to change our fortunes because as i say to you devils and dragons are just bred in everybody's heart on a daily basis well i mean uh, the best way i can like an ai is uh, social media the internet that's the next stage we jumped the moment we jumped the moment we got into the internet we jumped we evolved um and it will be the same thing for when ai is I think AI is already here, to be honest with you. I think true formed AI is very close from what I've been researching and then, and uh, understanding. I think uh, the quantum computer, which has been said to be the birth of true unfiltered AI, once that happens, is, is almost here. Um I think at this stage, I think it's, it will be an it will be another evolution in, huma in humanity's kind. You know, when uh, the internet was evolved, how much information was thrown into hands of billions? And again, it's going to be the same thing when it comes to AI. You know, maybe just not in our hands. Um, that's what I said. I said. I said. I think we we went in blindly with the internet um, and I think we're going in blindly with AI and it's a question of uh, those who create it those who move forward with it those who evolve it as long as those can have an understanding and a healthy respect for the power they wield will be okay it's the same ironically it's the same thing with the Oppenheimer movie you know, he created something knowing full well the devastation it would cause. And he had a healthy respect for it. AI. Mm. Um, yes. Now, the question of whether it should have been created or which side it should have been given will rage for many, many, many a moon. Um, but I think uh, he had a healthy respect for what he was creating. I think that's the same thing we needed for AI as well. You know, that's my take on it. That's fair. Uh, I don't think AI is good in the slightest at all. Cause but uh, that's because it's, it's going to take your job stubs, isn't it? I mean, you can't sit in your you can't sit in your van all day. I mean, you know, honest, just drinking a beer and watching. You know. It, AI will take most people's 
people's jobs uh, that no. work on computers, they will take no. their jobs. No, they will. no, no, <laughs> no, it won't. Trust me, and it won't. Will. It will. The, the only the, the, the biggest problem people when they say it will take our jobs. Hmm. Uh, I think I think it's this, working I with systems. Not every job, no. No, 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 no. Just generally, a majority of jobs. The, the problem with a lot of the systems when it comes to people. Okay. Human beings work within flawed systems. Right now, we have so many flawed systems within the uh, working with computers arena. For AI to take over that, I mean, it would it will it would have to change so many fundamental systems for it to be get to, take, get to that won't. point. It won't take every job, but it will take jobs. So the thing is, it removable. Will. What you see, removable. You're looking at it from. Um, I understand where you're coming from, and um, I know that you always look to see what's the potential bright side. But you, what you have to understand is that for the majority of the people that live in this world, right, and um, you know, they they will look at they will hear the words or the acronym or whatever AI, right, um, um, and think anti-human right misanthropic mm -hmm. right? and because they don't understand it and i and i get that side of it but whatever it is that's coming and it's just another tool to in, enslave people and that's how people will look at it and and i guess the question you've got to ask yourself uh we're already slaves right to dictatorial governments right even though we don't want to know right but and the question you know that that question still remains today right is a slave a slave if he doesn't know he's enslaved right and you can answer that question yes yourself. but you know there's, there's <laughs> the yeah uh, i mean and, and and so i understand where mr stubbs uh lord stubbs is coming from and i understand where you're coming from but well, it, me, it will it like, will be manipulated no matter what you do. It well, will be manipulated. I, 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 yeah, of course, because it's the people I, that wield it, and most people well, that wield it will have have a devil in their this, heart. And, yeah, this is where I this is where the thing is where I get a slight difference. True AI will not be wielded, and this is the difference. I, I in my head has ever play into it. It true AI is coming, yeah. and it won't be wielded. It will, uh, it will, it will evolve in itself. Now, will how it that will play itself? out? Will it, oh, will it, oh, will yeah, it get oh, more yeah. advanced than humans can? Uh, it already is. There is, there is already. You can see it jumping leaps and bounds. And just, this what, humans are, like, if you get like, oh, like, machine AI, learning is is yes, it is is. Uh, ex ex if you're in a war zone, would you? Would, or if you you, you get let like, AI control military machinery. But you well, wouldn't be in the war zone. Human, you, no, no AI, it's just the thing. AI will will end up in the war zone. Well, no, no, AI will end up in the war zone but, at but the detriment it, of but, humanity. But so here, what will happen thing, is... It, it, this might benefit it. They just might switch on the kit up and say, these humans are stupid, they need to stop fighting. Well, <laughs> potentially. But what will happen, it will potentially be, it will be human, human, humans themselves all withdrawn from the battlefield and AIs will, will take on board that Role, and so it will be effectively like a computer game. AI is battling other AIs. Now, when I say true AI, I'm talking about quantum computer AI, which is sentient, its own sentience. Um, there has has been a history. There's been many. Uh, I think there's a many discussion and, and uh, papers on the idea of quantum computers being the true source of sentient AIs, a different life form, which we would have created. Um, and this is where I said it all depends on how we set it now that will play out our future. We won't know how it's going to play out until the sentient AI comes into being. Tell me that's uh, right well, Asimov's laws is the way out. Uh, sorry, Asimov's laws is the way out. I meant in terms of um, time. Uh, okay, uh, how quickly did we evolve when the internet was given to us? No, no. I just want to make sure I'm not here when all this occurs. That's what I'm saying. How how many years did it take us to get where we are now? 
to where the internet was. Billions. No, 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 no. When the internet was if first invented, mm-hmm. how did we evolve? It took us about 20, 20, 30 years, didn't it? Yeah. I would say that's about the same time, maybe quicker, because we have now AI, semi-intelligent AI helping us out. Mm. So that is what I'm saying. What I'm seeing now, I'm, I've got people who say to me who, who will use ChatGP, for instance, to answer questions. Now, I'm not saying they're clever questions, and sometimes I don't always get it right, but AI is already learning. It's already moving. Unfortunately, I think, VJ, you're going to be around potentially at the birth of AI. Mm. Um, you probably won't mm-hmm. be around to see the end of it, but you'll probably be around to see the beginning of it. And I think, yeah. I think within the next 15 years. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though, as well, the, this big data... I think I think in the next ten years, all this social media stuff for many people are going to be pulling back from social media and, and actually thinking about what they're putting on the internet and what data they're giving companies now. But, but the problem is, it's too late now. It's yes, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, and they, yeah. people people. The problem is, it's like people going back to Twitter. Oh, it charges. The problem is, mm-hmm. people read terms of service with social media. It's free. They can use all, all the stuff you post. They can use. As the, you, you see, know, uh, my dubious. Uh, yeah, I, when I say people say free, mm, yeah, but it's not it, actually free if you read it. No, it, you're giving them. You're giving up something. Whether it's your data, your address, your email, it's all, it's all something is something is is always given for. You don't get anything for nothing in this world. I think the same with the social media. Will start pulling back from social media. I, they will. I don't know too much about I don't know too much about AI. Actually, I know nothing whatsoever. But what I was going to ask you, removable, and I, forgive me if I've got this wrong, but but the advancements of AI and whatever uses uses intended for it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure it's nefarious. Um, that's probably the best approach, really, to look at it from that perspective. <laughs> but um, the 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 it seems to be diametrically opposed, if that's the right term, to what you said in terms of there are systems that we use today that aren't fit for purpose. This is correct. So the like biggest the fund, so for instance, the biggest, me. well, the biggest thing, no, well, it's, yeah, yeah, just kidding, just kidding. I don't know. The, I don't know. the biggest flaw I see is when people say, oh, it's going to take over your jobs, is that the systems we have in place are so archaic, it can never do so. So, perfect example. AI is going to take over the NHS. No, it bloody well ain't. Trust me. Not the computers they run. No chance. Exactly (laughs) that reasoning yourself. That is the perfect example. We have built in systems and infrastructure that is so archaic, but it's still perfect for use that it'd have to probably redo those archaic systems and rebuild them from the scratch at the beginning upwards. And until that happens, it's not going to happen. So when someone says to me, "Oh, they go," no one's going to like you. Got I've got, I've got my missus is a nurse. There is no way AI is going to help her out in terms of the um, her job. That now she is actually she is actually doing she's actually in a job now called the virtual ward, where basically the AI is a tool, so it will help take that data. So, for instance, if those who don't know uh, across Europe. Uh, I think actually America is doing it, but here in the UK, we're starting to have virtual wards. And what this does is it allows the patient, if they're deemed suitable, to go home with a health monitor, which it could be an, either an Apple Watch or a heart monitor, depending on whatever uh, issue they have with them. That monitor will then send the data directly to a nurse or a doctor in a virtual ward who will then monitor them 24 7 from that ward and they can stay at home that data is consistently being trans uh, transmitted the data is then inputted manually in some cases or is in some, in some cases it is actually just automatically dropped in to a variety of databases the trouble is those databases then have to work with the archaic system of the hospital that's never going to happen that's why they need someone to try and manually and turn turn things on you need the doctors so when people say oh it's going to take my job you're going to have to have a job that has superior systems in place for it to work with 
And this is the thing at this stage. I don't believe that's the case. Now, I'm not saying that maybe in 10 years time, when those systems are updated, will it not happen? Possibly. There is always that chance. But at this current stage, AI, and I suspect for another 10 years possibly, will never be able to take over people's jobs because of the systems and infrastructure that is already in place. That it's not going to easily be able to uh, align with. And this is why I'm very, I'm not so worried about it because I think AI at this current status, and maybe this will change later on, it will be used as a very good tool. So one of the things I'm seeing at the moment is that they're using AI to operate machinery for pinpoint cancer treatments. Uh, it can spot cancer treatments and diagnose cancer uh, cells a lot quicker than, say, a human at the moment. That is a software tool, but it isn't taking over uh, the actual person's job because even with that particular tool in place, it still needs to go through prominent checks of human individuals. And this is why I was talking about early on where we put in basic fundamental laws or systems in place where it still falls back to a human individual you know uh it's not fully automated if that makes sense no and talking of automation um there was a time like 10 years ago when people thought that oh you know headsets console let's just stick to stick to those because we know those there's no way that they can be mated by fully automated factories and look at it today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even with those fully automated factories, there's still human beings there. Less I'll Very give true. you that. Less I would give you that. But they will still need human beings to ensure that it's, at it's peak optimacy, it's peak uh, output, and ensure that failures don't occur like maintenance now i'm not saying that will change further down the line but remember that has a system still in place it may be able to produce those cds automated getting it out and delivering it to people that hasn't happened yet now i do appreciate that drone deliveries uh, and other aspects are coming into being so maybe that system as this is what I was talking about saying, this archaic system maybe is going to evolve so that that automated system will be able to create you your game, your physical game. Your drone will then package it up, take it from the store and fly it to your house. I suspect that will happen in the next 15 years. But at this stage right now, no, I don't think AI is coming for your jobs. You know, so, I mean, you're safe for probably another 15 years. Um, so don't panic too much, yeah. but keep a healthy skepticism and a healthy eye on it is also what I'm saying. And keep an eye on those who create it and how they implement it. And that's what I said. If you can set up fail safes now, human fail safes, we should be fine. If we go blindly into it, that's when we're going to have issues later on down the line. So. But that's my that's just my you know uh, naive take on it and my just because I, I I get very in, interested in uh, the AI and the modern technology. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm catch twenty two. I see where you're coming yeah. from, but um, you know there are cities in the world where population is up to thirty million and up to a third, ten million people live in unauthorized slums. Slums. Yep. Um, and all they do is um, serve the elite, where the middle class are there to keep the to keep the peace, basically on on very minimal wage to keep the the ten million that live in slums that are, live on less than a hundred dollars a month uh, in order. And that's just one city of thirty million, right? In um, in a global population that's ever growing from seven million and above. And the, what what you're saying when it's not it's not i mean we've seen it and you know go back to your reference to animes right we've seen mm -hmm. the potentiality of what ai can may or may not do in the a, warning uh, yes the warning yeah, yeah. So, so at the end of the day you, you're going to have reticent people 
um, out there. I'm not saying you, Mr. Sean Stubbs, and you're going to have people that are going to look at it um, as a glass half full, as so on and so forth. But th the reason is, is not because people are against it or for it. It just, I don't know a good way of putting it, but it just challenges our innermost sanctuary. If, if I can, I can I put every it right? new, yeah, every new evolution has, has caused fear in humans. Yeah. Well, hundred percent. And people and people will inevitably retreat to that innermost sanctuary and try to find some semblance of stillness in an ever evolving <laughs> world. You can't, you cannot stop the progress because for no. sure the bottom line is if there's a profit in it, it's going to happen, and that's what you have to try to understand. Just to mention Dragon Wolf's uh, need for AI. Um, no, it is rapidly, rapidly speeding. It's it's probably quicker than the internet. So that's why I said I think uh, India is great. It's about forty years, and my estimation is to do with the um, the current infrastructure being upgraded. Yeah. And until that time, I think AI will generally bounce. I reckon I think in the next fifteen years. Potentially, a true AI could be formed. I said, once the quantum right. computer is is evolved, then then we'll have issues. It's how our other systems are integrated before it's a fully takeover operation. And until those those systems are the back, those infrastructures are upgraded, my goodness, then so start performing cataract procedures or vasectomies. My goodness. Uh, well, as I said, they already are doing I, I some mean, surgeries. I, 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 already I, I, are, I, I, yes, yes. To, to a degree, I mean, I love the positive of the game because he, he is right. AI could be utilised in a great way. Oh, one hundred percent. Yes, it, without a doubt. Yeah. There's always an element of fear. Yeah, healthy obviously. fear. I would say healthy yeah. fear. Remember, remember, what I would say is this: Yeah, we don't know, right? So we should be really Unknown. careful because we don't know. And so we are dogs, and dogs shouldn't bark where lions dwell this is this is what i was saying to you about when i was talking to you about how we how we entered the internet world uh quite blindly i don't think we should go down that path again that's why i said we should put in healthy checks healthy human checks healthy laws in place as i said asmos laws because hmm? google is actually behind in ai terms are behind microsoft google's yes. panicking they are absolutely panicking because their AI isn't good because people are now using AI to search and their Google AI is not up to mustard. Well, to be honest with you, a lot, a lot of, uh, as I said, uh, chat GP, I know of cases. and I just Google stuff, it will be an AI. And well, Google's he, AI is not correct. Yeah. First, here's the first example of a modern day AI being used. I have a colleague of mine whose son is actually using ChatGP to write his um, hmm, to write his report, shall I say, and then he's using anti uh, anti AI to software to ensure that no one can pick up the fact that he's got AI software writing those reports. And also, here's another factor. AI, <laughs> AI is a copyright. Uh, AI is a copyright thief. They steal content from the whole of the internet that isn't theirs. Copyrighted content, and that will probably put a stop to a lot of the AI and the laws. Mm. Because they do steal. They do steal. It's, AI it's, is part of stealing content. It, it's yes. I don't think though you're going to get a chance to say. <laughs> um, there's an old saying. When it comes to the internet, once it's on the internet, it's free for everybody. And that's unfortunately the case with AI. If it appears on the internet, then it's going to, you know, it's going to then basically, it's, it's, it's free for all. I'm not saying there isn't going to be uh, uh, cases against AI, but the question is going to be who's the case against? True, it's hard work. Uh, you are right, um, indie gamer. Chat GPT is crap. Yeah, I, I, I oh, uh, I agree. No, no, I, I agree. I, I asked yeah. Microsoft's, um, not not saying names. I asked Microsoft, um, AI, not mentioning no names, the name of my pest control company, and it told us that we were the largest multinational company in the country, <laughs> in the well, field. We we're but not. Think, remember <laughs> this, uh, Chat GP didn't exist. Probably what five years ago? 
basics is required for, for many number of years. It'd be very basic. Very, very but basic. what I'm saying is the evolution of that is 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 speeding up. So oh, yeah. what I'm saying, and this is where I think as um, – uh, I, think, I can't remember whose name was. Dragon Wolf mentioned uh, things will double and then triple, then going to quadruple. So what has started out as probably a joke now, as with ChatGP, will probably be a fundamental tool probably three or four years' time. Um, and that's how quickly things are going to progress. It's going to triple and double very, very quickly. You know, AI is getting smarter without a doubt. And this is where I've always, as I said, I can't reiterate, but it's, you need to have these checks in place now. Now is the time. We should have really probably had the checks in place probably five, 10 years ago. Now is the, is the time to get these checks in place, these laws in place when it comes to AI. The trouble is, I don't know many people who understand AI enough, well enough to put these laws in place. Yeah, it's, it just reminds me of um, Miyazaki and his documentary. His, he tried it once for a short, but now his completely reticence, his reticence to using CGI to make his movies, he's just gone back to, gone back to using traditional animation. <laughs> and, uh, it's quite funny, really, that we're talking about AI. It is. Um, going back to Miyazaki's approach now, back to saying CGI in the bin, I'm going back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, the way I live my life, and a lot of my colleagues, work colleagues, always call me crazy. The way I live my life is I am immensely fascinated by the modern technology. But I take certain aspects of the modern technology and utilize it in my life, as some of you may know, and how I create my channel. And there are some aspects of my life that has never come or moved on. So for an example, this is going to be a little bit into my private life here. I never have ever had a credit card. Ever. I only have ever had a debit card. And little things like that. I sometimes pay my bills with a check. That might scare a few people of you because some of you may know not what a check is, oh, and some of you. I get customers asking to use checks, and removable only in rare circumstances they do. Removable, you're not you're not alone because that's that's me exactly. But I don't have a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still. I, well, we have, I write the, checks and I use a debit card. Because you know, in the old days, you used to write you used to write a check out. It's not the old days, and, Stubbs. Honestly, it was only about a century ago. And and a check, and then you used to write on the back your bank details, and that would that would that would make it more official. Okay. Mm, sometimes, yeah. So, to answer question, Luke Steele, who the fuck takes a check these days? Um, your post office will. So, perfect example here is, sorry, for instance, sorry, hang on, let me just. Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, um, so, for instance, uh, I pay my gas and electric uh, not by direct debit. The reason I have had issues with direct debit previously is that the gas and electric companies here will fuck you over. And nine times out of ten, uh, give you a wrong bill. So I very quickly learned not to pay directly by direct debit. And I would do the read meeting and then pay uh, pay them directly. Now, if anything, you're poor like I am, sometimes you don't have enough money in the account. But if you pay by check, the check goes through the system. The system then says you've paid. But what? because it's been a check, a check will not actually be cashed until about a week to 14 days later. So if you don't have money in your account, but you know you're going to have money in your account, say 14 days later, use a check. And by the time it actually gets cashed out, money may be in your account. So it can be a good buffer. Uh, and it's those for us poor people who use it um, when, we, when we need to. <laughs> so what I was going to say here, look, um, People pay me, and I saw Luke's comment in the chat uh, in terms of who uses checks these days. Well, they were supposed to be phased out in the UK in 2017, but they never did it. Not, not here, no. not not here. I mean, we use checks. Well, we try to do it two twice a week, but I even pay the gardener with a check, and uh, he can he can he can either bank the check and the money will be in his account in a couple of days, or he can actually just scan it. It doesn't even need to go to the bank. And once it's scanned, it's void because it's already in the process of, uh, oh, I might be using AI there, removal. I don't know. But um, 
it's uh yeah so checks are still extremely common here in terms of how people do business and how i don't like that. to accept checks at all it's only the odd time that that's because your clients are known for it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's, it's no, a legit a form of, it's, it's a little general form of currency it's I, I know why i know why you don't want it stubs is because it will take it, the money no, isn't in your account straight away isn't it i'll tell you yeah. why removal to make a bank transfer here is like seven to fifteen dollars checks don't cost anything no and it's the same thing here it doesn't cost anything here I, there right, is what, something, what, which, actually businesses to actually cash checks it does cost money uh well for me if 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 it, when i put a check in it doesn't cost me and it doesn't cost me about so as yeah. i said gas and electric businesses if it costs them an extra couple of pence tough i'm not really interested in that nothing personal um <laughs> you, don't a, you, don't have a system, you don't have a payment system called zeal over there do you because that's pretty common here it's almost it's instantaneous just transference of money from your account to somebody else but we have instant out, yeah yeah no we do have uh instant yeah we do have something similar in the uk oh, but i don't Dragon use it Wolf. welcome and don't get me started about cash of society you'll get me ranting no <laughs> don't, don't. um so probably another issue is that i don't actually have a uh, online bank account either goodness I thought yeah. I was a bit. Yeah, I don't that. actually have an online bank account. Really no, I have a. Uh, he wants AI, but he wants to remain a traditional. I was uh, part of the CIA. He's a deep cove operations. <laughs> He's a, no one knows who he is. Well, as I said, people. People do find me weird that, that I have a very unhealthy interest with future technologies that's coming through modern technologies, and I do use a lot of modern technology, but my line in the sand at least for me personally uh, and this is because generally because i'm poor uh when it comes to banking or paying a bill i have kept what would be now is probably archaic traditional methods so as i said if i can pay by cash not a problem if i can pay by direct debit uh maybe uh that i have no problem utilizing because it goes straight to my account uh, but when it comes to instant transfers I don't actually have an you know, I don't have an online account. It also means I've never been hacked, which is also been helpful. One of the reasons I went down that path is uh, I won't mention the person. I have a person I know, uh, and this is how I can be very careful how I say this now. Who uh, he? How do I put this in a very politically polite way of saying it and not get myself or himself in trouble? He was in the dark web. He worked in the dark web. He was found out by the government and was asked to work for the government because of his actions on the dark web. He explained to me a few things and uh, he showed me how quickly people on the dark web we can get into a variety of things and that did kind of pull me back from going fully integrated into modern technology and so hence because of that i am a little bit of archaic and uh futuristic um as i said when it comes to modern technology i absolutely love it i want to see it or see how it grows we're seeing but when it comes to payment processing i have been stuck with the archaic systems and it's all because of my conversations with this particular person um he very easily said to me he says uh, he said every single system we have right now can be hacked it's not a problem he says the only way you cannot be hacked is if you don't have anything on those systems and it says so if you there is is there is when that's what you uh, said stuff luke, luke uh, i believe i did correct me wrong when it comes to banks in the uk i don't believe even under the data protection Act that banks are allowed to admit that they've been hacked it it causes uh, chaos i don't believe they're allowed to even say they've been hacked even if they have i'm pretty sure it came a few years ago as this act that the, go the government makes them sign or something. Even if there are, bank, bank's been breached, they don't tell you. Also, uh, a lot of breaches uh, are never known. Because um, what, what happens is people just start pulling the money out. Well, pull well, the money out. That, well, this is the, one of the reasons why he now works for the government is for that very reason. It's that um, 
the best way I can describe it is that some of those on the dark web, they're doing it for kicks, doing it for fun, they're doing it for reputation. And so the fun is actually getting into somewhere that you're not supposed to be. <laughs> it's not actually about causing problems, ironically enough. Now, that's not saying that there isn't people out there who uh, they have to ramp up their reputation and so therefore they have to create problems because that we know happens. But generally, it's trying to get into somewhere uh, and basically that you're not supposed to be. Uh, secondarily, it's also getting in there and leaving a tag behind uh, so that people can verify that you've been in there. Because that's another thing. Um, they will use a digital tag, which not many people will know. It will be a K word, a phrase, or even just a variety of particular well-crafted numbers once they've got into a place. It, it, if you, it's, it's, it's the stuff I learned from him. Oops, did even should I say that? The stuff I learned from that person um, was scary, to say the least. He got into my phone with under thirty seconds, and I would suggest I, I had I had at time probably what I would be deemed the most secure phone thing because I didn't have hardly anything on it and he still managed to get through and get into, into certain th certain aspects of my life and he's like at this stage right now there are just you are effectively an open book in terms of your online data the best way you can do yourself is mitigate certain things uh, and it's generally the best way is not by being on certain things um and so he says you have to make your own personal choice of what you're willing to compromise and what you're really not but he says if you're online you're an open book to a professional hack um, it's the same thing with a lot of banking accounts uh, systems the problem being is that he was explaining to me is that majority of the systems and this is the infrastructure discussion again is that they're built from they haven't really changed. They're built from a DOS-based system, and that DOS-based system hasn't evolved. What has happened is it's been layered upon and layered upon and layered upon and layered upon to change it, to evolve it, to do better things. But its core properties still actually is back from the DOS-based systems. And if you can get back into those DOS-based systems by using backdoors, so shortcuts, or security elements, you can actually circumvent a lot of programs. Now, I can't go to, into too much because, again, I don't want to say too much because uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to, um, for one thing. But let's just say it will be shocking to realize how easy things are and how unsecure you really are. Now, this is not to say you should worry because I think nine down to ten, I think we have gotten used to the fact that you're going to get hacked at some point. It's just the same thing with VPNs. That's why it's being sharp rise and VPNs. You just protect yourself the best you can. You do your research. You find the best protection for yourself. And don't worry too much about it. Um, if you're really worried, try and not go into that system. Try and not, you know, open up that element. And that's why I chose when it comes to banking, that thing, I just won't do it. I'll just stick with my archaic methods that have been working perfectly fine for i'm not going to tell you how many years but uh for a large swathe of years and you know you can still enjoy a full life without so, worry about it removal uh, i just caught the end of that there because i just went to get grab a drink but uh what, what was you saying what were you using to avoid being hacked or sort of have been the, the, the best the best the best ex advice he gave to me uh, was um don't be involved in the system but like, in you know, that particular system. And, you know when you yeah. go on the internet and then do your banking and go to, you know, your special... If you have an online bank account, you have to understand that at some point you have to take on the responsibility and acknowledgement that you will get hacked. Yeah. If you don't have an online banking system, uh, bank account, then you'll never get hacked. And if you do, the best way to protect yourself, well, you mentioned VPN, or does that not really... Well, no, what I'm saying is the large. there's a large rise of VPNs now because of the way that you protect yourself there are large security ways you can help protect yourself it, it can help they're not fallible oh, they're okay. not fallible yeah but as he said the very best way you can do is by well, not being part of that AI system, system. <laughs> <laughs> um 
Sorry. But, you know, DOS attacks and stuff like that, you know, he said the very best way you can be is to not be part of that system, yeah. uh, which makes sense. And that's why I, you know, it's just for me personally, I, when it came to the financial aspect, I just didn't want to get involved with that system. You, um, you just remind me of that band, Rage Against the Machine, but anyway. <laughs> I've taken my post been flown by pigeon mail. I, you know, they still could be severed, mate. You know, people shot down a lot of pigeons back in the day. Um, but I know it's a personal thing, and as I said, that's why people in my 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 colleagues say to me, "You said you're Generally, just though, people that you weird." Skeptics are el- very very elderly people that believe it's the most secure method because that's all they know, and that's in my experience with customers, they're the only people that want to pay by check. And generally, I try and talk them around and say, "Have you got a bank card? I've got a card machine. It's far easier." That, uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, they, they, they have got a card. Yeah, no, no, but again, that's a, that's that's not a bad system. I, uh, what I'm saying but is the reason why you, it, uh, uh, it does charge you exactly. But not, the not way, you, the customer, uh, but the yeah, exactly. it does. Yes, I said for me when I was using when I used checks, it was a backup which gave me time to get money into my account so it was the uh so for me uh, my gas and electric company they seen it had been registered they had been paid now the money wasn't in their account until 14 days later but it doesn't matter because i knew money was coming into my account payday was happening like three days later or something like that so for me, it was a way, as you said, it was a slowing down of that process, which was a benefit to me. And it is sometimes used for, as you said, the older generation. I know very few people in my office who have who use checks. They don't use checks. I, I in How fact, I think about when you went EGX because London, everything's nearly bloody card only. How do you survive then? Uh, there was cash. Yeah, you oh, could pay by cash. cash. Yeah, you could pay by cash. Yeah, uh, it hasn't didn't go full uh, cashless payments. I said I still use my direct debit card. It's it's not a problem. I said the check thing was just it was an elongation of the process for me, which block- helped me out. Have you got blockers on your wallet for your card built into your wallet? Have you got? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh come on, Mrs. Security, you're missing a trick. There. Well, as I said, I said it's oh. a debit card. I, I, you're right. I should Probably, probably do wallet. something like that. Uh, exactly. As well, to be honest with you, if they if they try and hack into my account, the five p no, no, that I've got no, left in there, they're, they're more than welcome. No, no, to no. It. It's, it's times like it's times like this removable. You're right. My plans to go and retire in some remote village in Okinawa. Come to fruition. I really hope uh, they come to fruition. The more and more I listen to it. It's been a great show tonight on uh, a conversation with friends. What was that? You trying to get rid of us? No, (laughs) I removed the gaming part. Oh, I thought thought he was saying to I thought he was putting an end to it removal. That's what I thought. I was like, Jesus Christ. I I thought it might have been because I mentioned nobody's noticed on screen. I was eloping to Okinawa. No one noticed on the screen. I changed it to a conversation with friends. On the screen. You should visit Okinawa, Mr. Stubbs. Yeah, well, I think so, yeah. I didn't but again, realize, though, the, the check situation was going to kick off such a thing in the I, chat. I, I tell you what, it is, it is every time I mention it in the office, people do get very debated about it because it is very weird. So to youngsters, they have no idea what the hell a check is. To the older generation who I work with, they understand it, but even them are slightly confused until I explain the process of why I'm do- utilizing it. Um, I've had people in my office. This is how scary it is. I've had we had a DOS attack on our systems. Our whole systems went down. Could you explain and, to people that ain't technically minded what a DDoS is? Uh, this is going to be a tough Dis- one because distributed denial of service attack. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a variety of attacks, and sometimes okay. So the best way I can describe it is, think of it if you've got a mailbox, and someone then decides to send six billion letters through that mailbox, and so it stuffs up that mailbox so no other uh, letters can come through. Think of it like that, but on an internet level. Um, we had that happen to our systems, and basically the entire office was about to go. Well, you can go home. We can shut down me being the idiot, basically said, well, we have a fax machine. We can continue working. <laughs> not one person, not oh, one yeah. person. Well, the, we, we had deadlines, and so they were panicking. It's like, how the hell are we going to get these deadlines now? I said, look, we have a phone. It's still working. The client has a phone. 
I said, we've got a fax machine. We just use a fax machine. Not one person in that bloody office knew how to use this fax machine. And fax machines haven't been phased. You know, fax machines, as far as I'm aware of, you know, are still utilised as well. Medical, medical industry. Consistently. Yes, exactly, consistently. And so we used a fax machine. And that's how we – an old-school method. But it was crazy to me that – I was probably the only person who knew how to use this technology. And I'm not that old as much as what Stubbs thinks I am. I'm really not that old. Indie gamer and Luke, that apparently I am the youngest on the panel. I did not know Removable is older than me. However, he will not say how old he is. Because no, he, he mentioned not gonna the early 80s, and I was only born in 1984. That's I, I like the way gone. he's. I like the way he's painting you with a gloom ridden I'm actually brush really quite good because I'm, I'm, ne- I'm never the youngest on the panel. Gloom ridden. Um, gloom ridden, yeah. But I said, so yeah. for instance, so old technologies are still utilised. I, you know, I came from a generation that was saw the internet grew up, saw the internet flourish, you know, but also prior to that, I had no internet. And I think it was a, it's a, it was a good generation to kind of do it. I'm trying to teach my children the same thing. I'm kind of hindering their... Uh, experience with certain technologies so they understand the outdoor world a little bit as well so you know understanding how things you know you can live outside and work live out and and grow outside as well as the new technologies coming up because i know they're going to jump ahead of me very quickly i mean kindergartners now are still being taught how to code you you know kindergartners now are actually being taught uh coding programs there, there's little programs out there on the tablets which actually can teach king, kindergartners now how to cut. My, my kids weren't taught that. It's, as I said, it's coming through as of, I might say, but say now, it's happening. Good. Um, well, I don't think that but we, we never, we, as I said, that's how quickly things are progressing. Well, I never had new, yeah, we never, we, we had, you know, we had, we had, the best we had was probably databases, databases, how to create databases. You know, on the hacking That's, thing, yep. my wife's company, I'm not saying what company they did, but they're an American company, and they have to have, they had fiber long before our entire area had it. They used to pay £10,000 a month for servers. They had to be hooked up to America. And they came in, one, they, they pack they pack goods, right? Mm-hmm. And their servers are linked to America. And one morning, the servers are all offline. And it's the the it had the tech were on the phone to the uh, FBI, and it turns out that the FBI somebody had done a DDoS attack on the American servers, which actually mm-hmm. knocked the UK off. Mm-hmm. And they had to all go home, basically. Mm-hmm. They, couldn't, they couldn't operate without the internet. Yeah, it's weird. It's, that. Uh... The, 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 the orders are in the UK, but the system works for America. It's really I don't get it. We do really get weird. a lot of a lot yeah. of our software systems is imported from other countries. Uh, Microsoft, for instance, biggest American importer for a lot of the UK-based software systems. I'm not saying there isn't UK-based software systems. I'm just saying they are one of the biggest. I remember um, that Dragon Wolf, the BBC. I do remember that one. Oh Christ, the BBC Micro. Yeah, that, that tells you something. See. That's how old I am. So, but I'm just saying is, it, we are evolving at a quite a quick, rapid rate, um, and so I think it's up to everybody individually where the line they wish to draw, you know, to cross. I said I absolutely love technology. I, you know, I will go out of my way to search out for new technology. The technology I use, people wouldn't agree with. You know, you know, I'm a mobile con- uh, editor person who literally works from his phone. 24 you, are like, you need to watch my mate from the Sega guys. All the content and all the videos they make, uh, he does and edits on the Apple uh, tablet. He yep. does it, it, same it, as me. It's not it, Apple it, tablet, but yep, same here. He records on a, a cheap yep. recording device because he does Mega Drive, Dreamcast. But he's, you can, uh, you he, can, he, dare... he, he downloads it off, off a laptop, then all onto it. Then from the cloud to the tablet. I I can I can edit. It. Yeah, it's you can you can everything I've created is done on mobile software. Yeah, the, you want to look, check that channel out. All the content is done off a, off a um, tablet. It's not a nightmare, Jesus. As I said, with anything, I mean, I've you've got PC. Yeah, I've got PC at work. 
don't get me wrong, PC will be quicker with 100%. It has more options. Um, the best way I've quickly managed to turn around a lot of the stuff I deal with is templates. As long as you have templates and you have a good setup on how to get those templates moving quickly, you can pretty much create anything. There is, the reason I like the mobile software scene is that it's, an, it's, it's not a barrier for anyone when people say i can't create content you're talking out of your backside your phone can help you create content at any particular time you don't need a pc to create content you can use mobile software mobile devices whether it be a tablet maybe a phone and i'm saying from probably five years six years ago phones you'll still be able to create content utilizing those so it's a great way to get into content creation now when you get more successful you know and you're up there in the highlights of like indie gamer go ahead 100 go for all the old pc method you know utilize the very best software you can but if you're first starting to come into this industry or first starting to want to get into content creation you don't have to go for the most expensive item to get you in there and this is what i am seeing you know, when it comes to content creation from maybe places that we wouldn't normally see content creation from so for instance um the outskirts of africa the outskirts of asia uh outskirts of european countries where they don't have very good internet you're seeing a lot more creators even in terms of gaming developers are coming through from those areas because the software side of things uh, and the mobile devices is powerful enough now to help them create the content they wish to uh, do. And I think it's only going to get better as time comes on. I'm still one of these guys who will argue that it will not be long before you get uh, your phone will be just as good as a PC. It will get to that point now. We're seeing it with, we're seeing it with the handhelds. We're seeing it. It's, it's getting to that point where there will be no when cloud get cloud based systems come online. I think uh, and our systems help you know make it a little bit faster. I think it will get to the point where you know uh, what you've got in your hand will be just as powerful as your home PC. In some cases, it already is. In some cases, um, I think you know it's 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 getting it's very exciting. It's getting to the point where I think a lot of people, you know, I'm I am always surprised how many people don't know about mobile desktops, you know, and how they can use their phone. It can be used in so much more ways than what they're utilizing it for. It, it blows my mind that uh, what's on their phone that they're just not utilizing. You know, you have a very powerful device in your hands and you're not really using it to its fullest, you know. So, but that's me. That's me ranting on another thing. I can go for that about that for ages. <laughs> I think it will. I think it will, Indy. I think it's, it's, it's the way things are moving quickly, the way things are speeding ahead. It, I think it. I think it will get to the point. I, I don't, I'm not saying it will. PCs will always be better. I do believe PCs will always be better. But I think we're getting to an apex where the software will. This is where the cloud gaming comes in. If the cloud systems can pick up the the vast heavy weight of the software of the software uh, movement, then why would you need hardware? Uh, it's getting to the point where I do believe where hardware will start to see a decline in hardware, we'll start to see a increase in software and cloud-based systems. You know, um, it, it, there will be, I'm not saying it's, it's going to happen just yet, but we are we're getting close to that where I think it will be a point where, you know, it'll just be software, software, software. I think, you know, as uh, if I was to look 10, 15 years in the future, or 20 years in the future. Here's a question for you. I think, I think, will PCs become a bit like physical media? Physical, you know, like, will it be like uh, physical games? Will it get to the point where actually everything will be cloud based system and your PC software, you'll be, you'll be far, you'll be just basically working from a cloud based system? I think it's going to come at some point. Uh, 
I hope it doesn't because I personally like, you know, the, the physical side of things, but that's where it's going. We can see that with the way games are. So you can see that with the fact that, you know, Microsoft, which was just for instance, Xbox wants to do a, it wants their system on as many different devices as possible. Yes, it's got it on a physical Xbox hardware, but it, I think they still. I, I think they would prefer if it wasn't. I think they'd prefer if it was just a, a system which you can tap in at anywhere at any point in the world. And once the you know the cloud systems come on board to that point where it you know they're very very reliable, that's the time when I think then hardware will be starting to disintegrate. I'm hoping not for a while yet, but I think the end goal is quite clear. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, uh, it's Dragon Wolf, I was talking about, yeah, yeah, it's my opinion. Jacob just mentioned about quantum computers. We were just talking about that probably about 30 minutes ago, and this is how I said about uh, quantum computers uh, will be the key for uh, true AI. Um, I think I mentioned it. I think I'm seeing rumors online. Again, this is rumors that they're close to breaking the quantum computer barrier. And the last estimation that I heard was around 15 years. I, as a rumor, I'm taking it with, with you know, I'm taking it as, as a, with a pinch of salt, as if it were. But the way things are moving and the way things are quickly evolving, maybe that is the case. Um, because if you do get quantum computers... <laughs> It'll blow whatever out the window what we've got now, that's for sure. There you go. <laughs> Sorry for talking <laughs> so much. Nice. So this is the difference I said. This is why I, I, I like I like the, the you know the technological side, but I also like you know the archaic side with me. I'm a, I'm a walking contradiction. <laughs> yeah, but it's your opinion on the. Uh content creation yes yes yeah again this is only from my personal but a lot opinion of, a lot of content creators um hmm, i would say younger content creators your tiktokers and instagrammers they're all using mobile apps and they exactly it obvious they are. it is not, it is the gateway unless, to, unless yeah. they've hit the, the ones that are making real money they probably are using pcs but they all start out on mobile phones yeah and you know, a lot, a and, lot uh, of Josh, it's, only it's, use not saying it that's is, the way it should go, but a lot of them are. No, but I think, I think it's, it's a gateway. It's, it's the door into the content creation. As I said, it opens the door for so many people. So when I've seen people before, I've had seen people who's like, oh, I'd love to do what you do. I'd love to make videos. It's like, why can't you? It's like, I don't have a PC. It's like, you don't need a PC. And then I show my, my mobile phone and I show them the, the software I use. Like, there you go. That's all I've used. I've just used my mobile do phone. Still use, do you still use PowerDirector? Yes. I bought it. Well, it's because I actually. Yeah, you can't. uh, When when it when it no, when I first started, it was uh, uh, they actually offered yeah they offered a lifetime. This is where it went subscription service, and I was like seven forty nine a month for X amount a year. I when it first started, uh, I bought it outright for three quid. So now it's an obligation for uh, they don't don't kick you off. They just up up that data, update it, and I've still got it. You know, as for life. So, um, but there are different different uh, mobile editing software coming out now, and there's some really really amazing ones uh, that will give you some fantastic different tools. I mean, uh, PowerDirector itself is a really good software uh, in terms. It's not obviously it's no way good as like the best PC uh, editing software. I'm actually um, playing around with video at the minute. I'm, uh, I'm I use I use Mavi. I think I say it, Mavi Video Edit, Edit Plus um, to edit on right. So. When I say I on the phone, um, so stuff will be it, coming for me soon. Yes, um, editing on a phone uh, isn't as slow as what it is because what I use, I use a desktop mode uh, when I edit on my phone. So I connect my phone to a monitor and a keyboard, and I've got a you know, thirty-two inch monitor, and the software itself can be excessively quick it's just as quick as if you would be using you know uh, pc editing software it's not as slow as it uh, as you it quite 
as you would like to think it is, is I'm not sitting on my phone, you know, at this small screen, quickly moving things around and trying to cut things up. You can do that. Um, but no, I've connected my phone to a monitor and a Bluetooth key, mouse and keyboard, and I'm doing quick edits, you know, oh, you didn't just as quickly. Yes, yes. So the there's yes, I use uh, Samsung Dex. Uh, there is a variety of different uh, um, desktop modes out there. I think there's about four at the moment. And Google actually does support a um, s- mobile desktop. Uh, in its actual systems, you have to turn it on under developer options. Um, it's a bare basic bones one, but actually Google does have that. So you can actually turn that on, connect it to a monitor and use it like a PC. And I say like a PC because it's not PC. It's a, I, the best way to describe test up modes, it's a light experience. Think of it as like a, a power director light. It's a light version of a, of a PC operating system. It will never be as, uh, as good as a PC system because obviously a PC has more power. But this is where I think that when the uh, cloud-based systems are much more fully integrated, then I think you'll start to see that power being brought across. So like Enforce, uh, GeForce Now, for instance, a lot of their lot of their systems can give you, a lot of their gaming systems you can play, uh, can use a very high powerful PC because that's what it's running off of. It's just streaming that to your phone. It's the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised at some point you'll it'll get to that, it'll get to that stage where you'll be remotely streaming from a powerful PC somewhere in the world, but you won't need one at your house. You'll probably just need a monitor, keyboard, and that's it. So I think to make it similar to the thing you're avoiding PC, why not just go see? I use a PC um, for most of my day job. Um, and I prefer to do things a little bit differently. I want something different when it comes to the way I create content. You know, I could have easily gone down the PC method, but the way I kind of wanted to to differentiate myself was I wanted to try and inspire those who'd never created content before and in my head it was like well how do i do that so i suppose you could classify as a gimmick my gimmick was that i if anyone sees the videos or the content i make i can say you can do this yourself you can come into this with little to no money because i wasn't not exactly rich either and do exactly the same thing um and that's how i wanted to kind of to do to, you know, that's how I wanted my brand to be. I wanted to try and give people hope uh, from all walks of life, you know, even to the poorest of, of us, and say, look, you can do this. There is systems out there that will allow you to do this. I think, you know, um, if you can afford to get a laptop or a PC, great. That's probably the best way of going about it. But also I wanted to highlight that your your phone also is – it's much more than just phone calls, Twitter, social media, and maybe paying the odd bill. There is so much more your phone can do. Why not use it to its fullest? And as most people these days have a phone, why not see what you can do with your phone? Why not open that up, open your eyes up? Uh, the best way I could describe it, and this one is good for indie, it's like having a Steam Deck and only playing mobile games on it. Why would you do oh, that? I see the reaction now. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 that's the way I kind of decided to go through this. And as straight as you've seen me, Indy, you've seen that you know when as we walked around uh, Waz, what I had with me, I had my laptop, my my phone, and I think it was a, a battery pack, and that was it. <laughs> um, Whereas uh, Indy's much more professional. I tell you, his camera alone. Whew. He was a, uh, yeah, he's a much more professional person than me. Me, I'm just a, yeah, one of these guys with just a, a phone <laughs> and a house keyboard. <laughs> well, he's not with the camera, he's not with the camera, PC around with him, is he? He had what a lot it? of stuff. He had a lot of stuff. I'm not going to tell you what he had, uh, but let's just say uh, he I had a lot imagine, of stuff. I can imagine what India had because he's he's ever the professional. 
He is a optimal field. professional. I tell you what, that man, that man knows about his stuff. If you want a, a, a professional camera, um, he will know. He will, he will know. Need, yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. He will know. He knows. Uh, uh, all you know. He had a he, his, his his stuff. He had. I was very impressed with. Put it this way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much because I don't know, okay. you know how much I'm allowed to say. <laughs> I don't know how much he wants people to know about, but yeah, he's uh, he's very professional um, and knows exactly how to get the best out of his equipment. You are in the, you really are in the community. You are one of the professionals. You know, you you know exactly what you're talking about. Because obviously, you've been in an industry. I'm not going to say it, obviously, but you, when it comes to kit and. If you were to ever make a vlog, etc., you would know exactly the right gear to do interviews in. Because you did, you did that interview with the developer, didn't you? Uh, the video interview, which was great. The developer of Trinity Fusion, and that was great. That was that wasn't the last. Was this the last EGX or one before? The last. It was the last. No, the EGX. Last, last. Yeah, I think it's the last EGX. Yeah. Yeah, that interview was great. It was. Oh, so he does know what he's doing. Mm. I think, to be honest, I think it's 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 uh, you know the there you go, exactly there. Exactly, capture oh, the moment of what it is. Yeah, I think I think it, it doesn't matter where you start when it comes to content creation. I think whether you start, you know, with the most high tech gear to the low life, just a mobile phone. I think as long as you're willing to do it, as long as you're willing to learn, as long as you're willing to uh, evolve and create. Like me, sat here, got, got all these video ideas, got a PC, got all the means to do it, but I just exactly. don't do it. Fucking lazy, isn't it? Uh, it's or you tweak bloody settings twenty four seven and then break things. Um, I, no, it's but but you're learning though. That's the thing. You're you're still learning from those things. And I think you know um, if we if we as content creators can give inspiration to the younger generation or people maybe who are older generation who want to do it, you know, we say a lot about the younger generation. There's a lot of older generation who would love to try and just create content, but don't know quite how to do it and don't understand the systems. So well, I think I'll, I'll use an example. I was at swimming lessons the other week with my kids. I wasn't this this young lad with his mum. And on his phone, he is doing what you were talking about. He mm. was making like a, I don't know what he was making, but it was obviously his dog. He was throwing the ball to his dog, but it was like a short TikTok thing. And he was making it so fast on the fly. It was going quick. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it is. These, these software devices have a variety of already built in uh, transitions, cuts, tweaks. You know, it's the editing software is getting so much better. It was very basic. Though. It wasn't it was. like complex, like Indy said. It, imagine if you really get into complex editing, it would be quite cumbersome and slow on a phone. You know, really intricate details of editing. <laughs> I, I do yeah, I don't. I don't think he was in. He was. He was no, underneath he water swimming. doing it. Do you, do you want to shoot though? Like, uh, it wouldn't coming. surprise me because most phones are waterproof. Most people so are would... willing to take that risk. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to find someone sitting unless underneath the Mr. water, bloody trying to cut. Unless you're like Mr. Who's the Boss, the YouTuber, and they just chuck him in just to test him. He, that's a good YouTube channel, everyone. If you don't watch him, Mr. Who's the Boss, he's awesome. Mm. Yeah, I, I, to ask you, I think, to ask you, I think there is, uh, when I first started, there, people would often say to me, I can't get into uh, content creation or YouTube. I don't have the funds, I don't have the experience, and I don't have the tech, there's the software or, you know, hardware and it, for me i was always it always was uh it shocked them and it, it, but anyway, it still shocks my boss today that i can run and work from my office using my phone you know your phone is so much more powerful than you realize i really do please think that we're probably utilizing it you know, when it comes to our phones and our tablets we're probably using them for about 25 percent of what they can actually capably do you know, we really, you know, if you look into it, you'll be surprised at what software, you know, what the hot software and mobile devices they can really, really do. I would encourage anyone to really look deeply into the, the phone they've got 
and just see what you can do with it because it does a hell of a lot more than than what you uh than what you're doing with it right now. And it's also expensive, you know. Think about it; it's an expensive device. If, Is it? Well, depends on what what yeah. phone you're using, mate. Honestly, it's these phones today, you know, they can be very expensive. You know, I'm not like um. You know, I would love to try and get myself some one of the older, the latest Galaxy Folds. You know, but I'm not like Wilmy Hood. Get yourself a Galaxy Fold. Wilmy Hood's got one. He's got himself the latest uh, Galaxy Fold. I tell you what, I. But the ones before, it's like my sister-in-law. She's having problems with hers now because we took it to the Samsung shop and he was looking at it and he's like, he says, "There's there's there's a fault with this phone." He was looking at it. He said, "You've not water damaged it." He says, "No." He said, needs engineer needs to look at it. And we went to the free shop to book it in. And they weren't interested. And the lad in his shop was saying, yeah, the folds, they all break. After so long, they'll, they'll break. And then he fixed it by the engineers. That there's a fundamental fault with them. I think... But I luckily, think that, but luckily it, my wife it, hasn't broke yet, but I would never It depends. I see, you've got, your missus got one. Oh, it depends on... Yeah, I, I know there was... I think, uh, I think I it was the... It. Why have um, an Apple made a fold phone? Because they don't want any hassle with breaking and breaking. I think they're getting better though. I think just as anything, I think I think uh, fold two and three had issues. Four was really good from what I'm hearing, and five for me is the battery life. I didn't want something that was just going to die on me halfway through the day. Give up because they're not selling very well. They don't sell no, the numbers, uh, and they're, they're no. made out of titanium. I think it's like titanium. it's really expensive materials. No, I, I, I think Joshua, Google's now getting into the, the foldable markets. Oh, Lenovo's getting down into the foldable markets. Uh, foldables, no. it's not. I'm sorry, mate. It's it's there for no. No. folding Focus. screen. Yeah. There's folding screen technology there. You can get folding TVs. I've seen that actually. Yeah, I just I just think that it is it's, it's uh, flip phones as well. Who went off by a storm? Flip phones came back on the market. They keep engineers in in jobs fixing them. So fair play. It's it's it was it was the old saying. It's um, I'm not interested what, in one anyway. It was it was the thing. It's uh, what's it where you build in uh, an issue? What's it called? Oh, VJ, I know this. Um, where you build in uh, something will break after a couple of years. You build in a, a effectively a, a uh, um, my brain's going, you build in a problem for it to break in a couple of years. It's like inbuilt, you know, pro- uh, I can't think what it's um, called, bollocks. Um, designed for obsolescence. That's it, designed for obsolescence. That's exactly it. I'm starting to think that a lot of um, phones are built that way. $1.99 in the old my kitty. Mm hmm. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I got it. I don't worry. I got it. Oh, BMG's in the house. Mr. Okay. Uh, Sonic himself. BMG, and he did. I asked him, did he listen to the last episode? He said, yes, he did. But he kind of blocked the Sonic out. He did. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, BMG, because... we haven't actually talked about gaming at all. It's oh, anime, we've talked a little bit about gaming. Security, no. banking, yep. passwords, anime, yeah, passwords, hacking. How I'm, I'm weird. Uh, Samsung flip phone now. Samsung flip phones. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a been a varied conversation. Yeah, just, SEO. You know. like, what, this might do well for the SEO. This might. You're going to try and put down all those topics in so that yeah, it will yeah. just at least one of them it will hit. <laughs> Might yeah, do it really I well. Up on, on the podcast feeds, 2,000 downloads. No, I'm joking. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things, I think. Um, society. I seen we, the Barbie we... movie. Not, not seen the Barbie movie. Have you seen it, VJ? The Barbie I'm sorry? movie. Uh, Have I'm you sorry? seen the Barbie movie? The Barbie movie. No, are you starring in it? No. Oh, BMG's asking. Oh no, 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 no. I'll I've, heard good, I've heard good. I've heard good things about the Barbie movie. So I'll, I'm going to watch it together with him if he's wearing his Sonic pajamas, and I'll wear my Tails pajamas, and we can sit on a sofa together and watch it hand in hand. I just can't believe so many people. With our Mario game. popcorn. We haven't actually been talking about gaming. People what, been what liking is, it. What are you playing, Mister Stubbs, at the moment? He's not. That's the problem. That's the thing. Why talk about gaming that he's not doing? He doesn't play games anymore. <laughs> Oh, watch dear. anime. Watch anime. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you know. What are you? What are you playing at the moment? Removable. Um. Oh, 
Christ. Well, uh, I have another game to review. Um, I, the, the, games can, the games you can talk about that are in the I mainstream guess. that we, somebody <laughs> may have heard of. <laughs> um, yeah. It's actually a, it's a, it's a weird one. I'm still playing um, uh, Atlas Falling. I really like that game. Um, also playing uh, Alien Dark Descent. Again, both really, really good games. But I have been ironically going retro for the last week, and I was playing Quake 2. <laughs> and wow, that is superb. It is the stuff that Night Dive uh, Studios has done to that is superb. And in terms of a historical uh, aspect where they have taken, if you go into the ID development setting uh, under the options, it actually has um, the old uh, playable demos from certain um you know some some, some early uh, expo shows on there. It's they've they've gone in and they have copied uh, stuff for historical purposes. Everything you've got, you know, pieces of dialogue, you've got uh, screenshots, you've got original models, original uh, expo demos that were have never seen the light. All stuffed into the Quake Two uh, remastered package, and if you've never played Quake Two, I would heartily recommend you playing it because that was the thing uh, that really kicked off the Quake multiplayer. And also, if you try out the multiplayer as well, that's a really good. But that's that, that, that's mm-hmm. multiplayer was the thing that started the Quake multiplayer. And it basically kicked off the multi- the modern day multiplayer. I would say, probably. You know, there's a you know there's a zero missing off of um, Luke's um, um, message there, don't you, Stubbs? I do. There there's is. a zero missing right <laughs> from that number. Four six seven. Four six seven. Yeah, and there's a zero missing. <laughs> so, sorry, yeah. Ruby. We'll carry on. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I've been playing that, and uh, I'd like to think that some of you would be playing that as well. But you probably haven't, have you? No, no. no. So, what have you been playing, Vijay? Or what should I say to you if you complete completing? I can't ask Stubbs that. Now, um, I, I got up to nearly four hundred hours in um, Zelda: uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and. Um, Bar a few side quests, I'd pretty much done everything in the game, all the shrines, all the light routes. I know this is probably not going to mean anything to you. Um, so pretty comprehensive in terms of completing the game. And then um, I was stuck for a few days. I, I really didn't know what to play. I was thinking of um, going back to playing Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation. And uh, I, I, I ended up um, on my, you know, on YouTube, you get like, you know, you turn YouTube on. And I think mm-hmm. I was watching of your reviews um, are removable and um, um, what was it? There was a game that came up um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps and um, so I, I, I watched a little bit of that and I decided to give it a go so I'm playing that uh, when I've got um, a stretch of time but besides mm. that every morning while I'm having breakfast or something because like 6 or 7 in the morning um, I funny enough I've been playing uh, Vampire um, Survivors mm. Very good, it's a very good game those are the two that I'm juggling between right now. And the thing is, I, you know me, I don't like to play more than one at the same time, but I'm getting into the habit of, of, of playing a couple of games. One, which is, you know, Ori Will of the Wisp, which requires a lot of attention and understanding, and um, and Vampire Hunters, which is just like, um, you know... You like could do it in at lunchtime or just a, a yeah, look at anytime, it. Just two or three, yeah, yeah, it's quick. Really it's, enjoy, it, really it can be... What's good about that is literally a 10-minute game, isn't it? A 10-minute game, you know, it, depending on how long you last, and you can just pick it up, play it, and then put it away, and then... We, don't think yeah. about it. It's it's, yeah. a, it's a great little game for just, just. Did you enjoy it? Did you did you enjoy that? I, I did. I did. I haven't. I've I've I, I'm grinding out the 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 characters at the moment. So, right. um, so uh, I don't know how far you've got with it. But I've got, I'm onto the second level, but I've kind of stuck with the first level. I'm trying to catch up a load of money, and then buy out some characters and you know upgrade some of the perk systems and that as well. The only the only thing I can explain to you how far I'm in. I've managed to last ten minutes. Uh, I've managed to get to level twelve, and then mm-hmm. I've saved up enough coins to do various upgrades. 
Yep. So, but yeah, I, I I'm playing it because it's just I just find it kind of fun, and there is a tactical approach that I've learned that you can take now to to last a lot longer and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, how to actually dismantle the game and make it work for you. Well, so, it's trying to find the perfect what's it called the perfect non killable perk and weapons and upgrades to keep you alive, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I've managed. While herding, while herding the 20 enemies, minutes, I think. Yeah. I also, do it, I also managed to herd the enemies in a specific way whereby yep. I kill a load of them in the first few stages in the first few stages to keep those blue sort of um, um, how can I put it rupees because they look like rupees from Zelda. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I keep those on screen and I keep masses of them, masses of them on screen and depending on the upgrades. And then when it gets a bit hectic, you know, I'll upgrade quickly, you know, if, 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 to help me survive. The one that I always use is garlic because it gives you a okay. uh, area effect around you, and if it, it, it kills bats really quickly, so you can level up really quickly if you have a garlic, um, right? Garlic power. So uh, that's just one little tip. If you want to upgrade quickly, try and see if you can get yourself a character. And one character does have that as a starter. is a is a basically a garlic uh, area effect that's consistent. It's almost like a force field, but it's like right. a and anything coming into you will slowly get damaged over time but uh, bats pretty die pretty quickly with it and you can really level up quickly and then you know add, add in more different perks and weapons uh to that I really, so, yeah, that's... I, really, I, I enjoyed it. i don't know if you've tried it mr stubbs but i i, I it's a, quite a good game i haven't it's tried it on... I haven't... it's on game yeah, pass that's it yeah, it's on Game Pass. It's really good. Pinky of Legend, Garlic and Bubble. Yes, Bible is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Bible. Have you used Bible yet, VJ? Yes, I use Bible. I managed to get it up to level three or four. Maybe actually level five. I managed to get it up to. Like, I had like yeah, because you can. Yeah, you can get. You can spin it around almost. Get that cooldown really quickly. Yeah, yeah Garlic and Bible is what I've been using a lot of. Um, and then who it's just these, trying to. Who the hell? Are, sorry, Ruben, who the hell are these people? First of all, the AI on this thing doesn't work because it's only 99%. But who the hell is who the hell is the, this 28% that have said that Silk Song's not very good? I'm going to sit Indie Gamer on you. I, didn't, I, I <laughs> did not realise how um, to do a poll. I just realised how, how I can do polls on this show. Holy shit, Dragon Wolf, you, got, you finished the whole of Vampire Survivors. Tan's Tan's got it all all Damn. Song. Silk Song. Hell yes, 71%. And that 28% no it is shit so you should have made you should have made you should have made it no I'll give it a try because it's in game pass you see you should have put that in the poll and I reckon that no it shit would have come down quite considerably <laughs> <laughs> well anyway you just don't know how to manipulate your audience Stubbs that's because he's well, too honest it's been a good show tonight we, 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 we covered gaming right at the end we well, didn't say it was about yeah. gaming. You got rid of it on the title. I mean, we could have been talking about toast. Oh, the title will be got. Will be, it won't oh, be different. Toast. It will be. But thanks everyone for popping in. Uh, Indie gamer, Pixel Slapper, Luke Steel, Dragon Wolf. I'm really pleased about your news, Dragon Wolf. That's great news. You got the all clear currently. Uh, who else? BMC, <laughs> friendly pests. <laughs> friendly pest. Um, many comments have been the pinky thing. of legend, pinky of legend. And, thank you very much, uh, Carlo, for causing the AI discussion. Thank you for that. Yeah, it was that was really good discussion. Thanks for that. Um, well, the one that you had with yourself, loads of people. Yeah, no one actually, no one actually rebutted any of my com com talk on that today, really, <laughs> except for the chat. Thank God. No, AI is being used in game development already, so. Yeah. Pinky of yeah. Legends as well. Thanks for popping in, mate. But yeah, it's been a great show. Thanks for joining us again, VJ. Yes, sir. Yeah, pigeon delivery. You can't knock it. Don't knock pigeon delivery. Not only does it give you the actual letter, but it's a good meal afterwards. Pigeon pie. Well, that might be that might be Luke Steele, but you stayed around. <laughs> <laughs> So did you two hours of checks? Uh, BJ, thanks, for, thanks for joining us oh. once again. Thanks for coming on. It's, good, it's been good to speak to you. Thanks and for us. coming into the office today. Yeah, it's been all good. We're we'll, we'll, we'll back next Monday, and I will have played some games by then. 
he says that. Right. Odds I, on uh, yeah, that 50 50 more people. Documentary and some more anime as well. Yeah. No, that's, that's been fantastic actually to hear your view on that. And uh, I just, I'm just really happy that uh, you've enjoyed that. Uh, mm. The documentaries and the movies and how much you've absorbed and uh, how much you've understood and uh, giving your, yeah, really lucid um, views on all of that. It's fantastic. Actually, I'm really, really actually quite happy for it for that. Um, but yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and, uh, welcome to the anime world of Studio Ghibli. No, oh, thanks. It's been good. No, Luke Steele, you know I was only joking, mate. You're good, mate. Good luck to you. You all are. Right. Thanks for coming on, Removable. Much appreciated. Thank you for letting me talk. I know I sometimes don't actually stop, but uh, much appreciated regardless. Is that Removable speaking or is AI Avatar? One one zero one. I mean, perfectly fine. It's Stefan here. But no, <laughs> but no it, was, it was it was good to come on, and it was good to actually have a, it. Was actually, it was actually a really good topics, and uh, yeah, you did really well, Stubbs, for put it, the topics in the chat so we could go and follow it. Yeah, I didn't actually. We didn't actually. <laughs> this this put down, we, today we discussed the world. <laughs> That's what we do. And we do that every single time. We discuss something that just comes up. And, you know, that's the best thing about it. It's, it's, actually, we should thank the chat because honestly, chat, if you come along as well, you give us topics. We just and we're not we're not going to shy away from these topics. We'll talk about them. You know, you know what we're like. <laughs> Stubbs has gone to sleep. Thanks everyone for coming on, and we will see you next Monday. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.